uh, uh, 6.40 p.m. Happy Super Tuesday, everybody. Uh, I did my civic duty and voted with a fabulous sticker. I voted early because I knew it. Excellent. So uh, first of all, uh, adjustments to the agenda. Yes. OK. Um, I no longer need an executive session after talking to the principals. Um, if somebody else needs it, but if not, we can pull it off. OK. Um, I'd, uh, I think we should keep it on there to uh, uh, well, we, to, to discuss a personnel matter. OK, good. And second, um, we need to uh, do a check of our board organization to make sure we know exactly who's voting on Thursday for our new superintendent. So I'd just like to go over that list and make sure because we had Janie, yep. you know, step aside. I stepped aside from negotiations. Right. And I just want to make sure we know exactly who is assigned and make sure we assign. Sure, we can, we can, we can, we can do that, and we can do that in board comments. Yes. And maybe you can also go over what happened Thursday, though. Oh, nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, yes. Um, Bonnie so let's. Bonnie has something. Oh, Bonnie? Yes. Uh, we can also remove number seven, I Love to Read Student Essays. Uh, that's out of the uh, Rochester I Love to Read initiative, and we selected three top essays, and the prize was they could come before the school board and read their essays. But we're going to put that in Rochester so they don't have to. That would be uh, yeah, that, would, that, that would be Great. sensical. Um, yeah. yes. All right. Um, I did want to add uh, maybe after the uh, annual report update, so like nine four one, to start talking about the annual meeting. Absolutely. Oh yeah. And uh, and again, I, I mean, we could just take a five or seven minutes on that. We don't need to get in big right. discussion. But right. Well, let's just. Yeah, we can do that. Or let's, we can also just put it right in, right in with annual report update. Okay. We can change that to annual report slash meeting update because okay. they, they, they definitely uh, relate. Uh, do we have times for the superintendent and the business manager? I just have one thing. Five minutes, three minutes. Okay, so we'll give you five. I'm going to give you two minutes to discuss your budget. Okay. Wow. Okay, so we can strike 8.2 as well. We'll just have uh, uh, the, the, the report. I'm assuming that the uh, uh, the principal's report is is uh, coming. Right, but it's oh. it is a couple things we're going to speak about. Right. Okay, and it's, I, I, I'm assuming we would want to make that to be 8. Point, well, the new 8.2. Sure. But how many how much time do you guys want for that? Just five minutes. Okay. Do the uh, times look okay? They were kind of. They look fine to me. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, okay then. Um, the consent agenda. We have uh, to approve minutes. We just got handed the minutes of uh, the February fourth regular meeting. Did we? Yeah, we. Did we not approve? It the, says in the, the minutes. I thought we did. The, the sixth and the seventh. Yep. In the minutes. It says yeah. So. Okay. So we're just, we're only approving the minute, the uh, regular meeting uh, minutes of February fourth, having already approved those minutes at the February fourth meeting. Um, copies have been distributed. Um, I read them online. I thought they looked okay. Uh, does anyone else have any discussion? Comments, corrections, additions, deletions. Uh, hearing none, I'd uh, entertain a motion to approve the uh, February 4th regular meeting minutes as presented. Come motion has been made and seconded to approve the uh, uh, regular meeting uh, February 4th minutes. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes are official. Okay. Um, Board comment. Um, as far as uh, let's let's start with the Thursday uh, the, the Thursday overview. Uh, actually, I didn't know it was going to pass. Uh, I want to look up and just make sure I look at the list of what we have. Uh, um, Talk about anything else? <laughs> Can you bam? Yeah. Bye. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is that? Oh, no, that's, 
that's the schedule. Oh, you're talking about that. Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, I can talk about that. I do while I'm listening. So, um, yes, I've been on the uh, uh, selection committee, uh, screening. Sorry. Screening committee. Very important to have the right word. <laughs> we got in trouble with that. Um, uh, screening committee. Uh, we looked at the resumes of 11 candidates. Um, so uh, and it was a very good group, a very broad range group. Uh, Lindy was there as well. Um, a lot of good discussion. Um, and we got down to three candidates that had experience or just had the close for this position. And we ended up You're rubbing off. Off. interviewing two. <laughs> and uh, Thursday is going to be, um, as I said, it's basically a drive by meal. These are not substantial. I know it's a That's terrible, a terrible it's, name. It's a terrible word. It was used by, it was not my word, it was used by the, uh, the man from the um, school board association who sort of helped us um, uh, uh, do all this. Um, but it is very quick. It does get a sense of how quick he's going to be in all these schools. It's a really walk through. Um, uh, uh, I'm personally very excited about this candidate. He's young, he's very energetic. He wants this job with this SU. Um, he applied for no other positions. He's from Royalton. Um, in fact, I just at Max today, um, uh, two people, Kelly Kelly, walked up to me and said, oh yeah, my parents know his family. Um, so uh, he's known, he's done pretty amazing organizational change and educational change at Williamstown K-12 for the past several years, and uh, has been sort of groomed to take on a superintendent position, and um, is, in my eyes, and I think we would say too, he's ready for this. Um, so I do hope, you know, he'll be in Rochester, there's a schedule, he'll be in Rochester from 8 to 8.45 on Thursday morning, and then I'm, shuff I'm sh you know, shuffling him between, he'll be here at 9, at this school at 9. So is he basically then, taking a tour and just maybe meeting a few people? Walking around, meeting a few people, I think, I don't know if you're arranging for people to meet. Okay, just the opportunity for him to kind of walk in. Yeah, walk in. So we talked about it as a staff today. Yeah, great, um, great. That they're happy to, and the older, to introduce him to the older students. So yeah, if um, there's time, yeah. just so they can Get a feel. Yeah. The younger kiddos, I'm not sure. Right. And we're going to have a couple of the older kiddos taken through our morning meeting because that's what we do right. at that yeah. morning meeting, and that's really about all they're being done for. Yeah. Um, but it is very fast, 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 and I'll be dropping them off. Uh, at Sharon will be picked up by another uh, group, Mary Ellen, and uh, and one of the other um, uh, screening committee people will be going to take them through the rest of the schools. It's a big journey. I don't know if you told me, we're going to have a map in our school report to actually see how big this SU is. It's, uh, it's extraordinary. I'm sure um, Bruce had no idea. <laughs> um, yeah, no idea at all. Uh, or Tara. Um, uh, so that's what's going on Thursday. And okay, great. Our two schools, that's what he's going to be around. Um, uh, Jamie, Jamie Canardi. And let me get this. Hey, hi. And a-R-N-E-Y. I do have the um, approved minutes from our reorganization meeting, if that's what you're looking for. Good. I was, I, I, I got it from Christy, but uh, right. if, okay. if it says, yeah, could you it just says, read that? Um, three members of the uh, WRBSU full board, um, Carl, Megan, and then alternating between Janie and I, but now it's just, just, you. just okay. me, Janie has okay. um, resigned. Will all position. three of you be? At Thursday night's meeting? No, it's, it's uh, 6 or 5.30. Yeah, and everybody needs to be there for 6 o'clock to prep with, um, with Winton, the VSBA rep, about the interview. And, and yeah, 6 o'clock at the board also has to be worked after ESPA. Well, not in breakout. No, 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 that's, no that's incorrect. The full board, yeah, the full board. has to be Yes, board. that's right. The full board has you to be You don't have to Which means when we... The SU full board Yes. Yeah, the SU full board does not leave does not reorganize by statute until the last board has had their annual meeting. That's my concern. That's the law. Oh, okay. So uh -huh. what will happen is if there is someone that was voted out or, or did not return to the board in one of the towns that had a meeting today or last night, that, board, that position would be filled like a resignation from any SU board. The SU board does not reorganize until the last board has had, had their meeting. 
Oh, this, yeah, I don't know that that's what they were saying. Okay. That, that's that, I, I sent a message to, 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 to Kathy in that and uh, in, in, in that thread earlier today. Okay. Um, but yeah, okay. that's not. There's no. It's okay. the the you know the towns. It is the responsibility, like uh, like we've discussed before. It's the we as a town decide who we get three representatives because we operate a school. We get to decide who those three people are, and then all the the only obligation we have to do is to minute that and note that to the to the SU. So you know, if we if if like when we changed and, and and Janie wasn't going to go to the SU meetings, you know, we told the SU. I told Don, and we went through it. Good. So. Um, I think either way, you have to be there for six o'clock. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Just throwing it out there, not to get it. The, the um, board, the full, our full board here, or we're just talking about SU board members, those three. Well, I mean, I, you can, we can sit in on the interview, um, but I'm not a voting member. Only so three. Yeah, yeah, only three of you who will be, right. you may also be assigned, randomly assigned a question. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, that is fine. I, yeah. I'll, I'll be there. I'm yeah. just wondering okay. if you were asking oh, the rest of the Yes, absolutely. Oh, no. I've even read my question. I was wondering. Good for you. Good for you. Okay. That's, that's all I wanted to confirm. Um, we at, at present do not have an alternate for negotiating. Carl is the primary. We do not have an alternate. Correct. Because I've said I can't do that because I'm stepping up more for the executive board and being yep. aware of the basis. Okay. Um, so. Yes, we we don't need to do that now, Carl. You can go into the negotiation mm -hmm. meetings. Um, yep. But just to know that that's sitting out there. As a <laughs> Sometimes I go to the wrong to the wrong yeah. meeting location. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Carl was so efficient, came great in, took off his coat, sat down, and was just like, "Why is Wayne Goodrich here?" Yeah. <laughs> and then he got up and left. <laughs> they, they all said, "S U office," okay. and I told him. Thank you very much. Did, did you do the report? Um, no, we went right into the consent agenda. I'm sorry, I totally skipped that. Let's go back and let's let's circle back and do the initial uh, public comment. And do we have time to keep the time? I can do that. Too. I should. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I just have a, an announcement that uh, our elected officials in Rochester are now involved with an article that was passed by 100% of the voters last night, mm -hmm. which. At the Gurdjieff School, the Stockbridge folks should understand what that was about and how that relates to everything we do. So maybe the Rochester folks can fill you in, or it should be part you know, of a meeting discussion, mm -hmm. because that's how the voters of the Rochester are feeling about the Yeah, um, I'm happy to. Uh, it's it's about the. Uh, um, Global warming mm -hmm. issue. issue. There's an article 14 of the global warming. Um, and I believe the key one is, uh, I don't have it. Climate emergency It's basically, yeah, but it's the it's, um, integral focus on these issues in all considerations for the town planning and things like that. And it's the town of Rochester, which is. That's how it's labeled. It's the town of Rochester shall do this. So um, I'm curious about you know whether that's just referring to the town officers or if it is also talking to all of us that we should make this a high priority in our decisions. Um, so I think it's something that's very much that the board should think about in terms of this uh, making decisions. As Mason has been reminding us regularly, um, whether it is from the rechargeable grass trimmer to what kind of oil furnace or other heating system we put into these new buildings. Part of the yeah. <laughs> um, uh, that that become a priority, because it's certainly now a priority in Rochester. I don't know what happened in Stockbridge. There wasn't anything wrong. There wasn't yeah. anything wrong. There. Sure. Okay. Sure. But there were three other towns that did the same thing. Isn't there, I thought? Yeah. There's quite a few towns. A number yeah, of towns that have had that have addressed yeah, uh, climate change um, in no, non-binding non yeah. non no. non -binding, uh, referendum. Thank you very much. Yeah, sure. So it was was when was this was this a warned article yes. in the in the Rochester? Okay. It was expensive. Sorry, I will I'll make sure I have it next meeting so I can do it. Or I have. So what are you, you looking for? Yeah. Can I do that? Yeah. Yeah. And there was a, there was an amendment to that. 
well as past. Yeah, yeah it changed the wording a little bit. As the, as as, the, uh, as the best of the abilities of the town. To the extent of the town within, as possible, to the greatest extent as possible within the means available to the town and according to Vermont law. That's the time that we have. Okay. Certainly, we had uh, uh, talked about uh, you know green initiatives as something we wanted to cover at our retreat, at our last retreat. So we can certainly, you know, strategic planning should probably involve the, the environment around the building you're strategically planning for. Um, is there any other public comment? All right, uh, let's jump into, uh, is there any other board comment? Then let's jump into uh, Bruce's report. Just uh, one, one issue, um, well, two issues actually. One is that we, uh, Tara and I have been uh, around uh, for the districts in the last two days. Two went, two passed, two did not pass. Uh, First Branch did not pass, and Stratford did not pass. Um, so, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Stratford was today, and, and Chris Branch was last night. Along with Sharon and Rudd, they both passed, but Chris Branch didn't. Um, there's quite a bit of back and forth with Chris uh, Branch about post-merger issues and closing schools and different things. Uh, so that's to be. Yeah. I thought there was something about they maybe wanted to, instead of having the kids educated in town, to have K through four and one and four well, through five through eight and the other. The, from the board is, uh, the Cambridge uh, folks don't want their building closed. Uh, some of the, and there was a, a movement from Chelsea who felt they could all be in one building. And, mm. you know, it's, it's kind of like things that we've touched on here. Uh, so, you know, we'll see to be continued where this goes. And and, and Stratford? Stratford was, oh, geez, uh, it was about local control. It was about uh, issues to do with the budget. Because um, they're not merged. They no, they're by right. themselves, and they have a five-member board that hasn't changed. But they do have uh, a substantial amount of their money is going to tuition. Uh, about 1.1 million dollars wow. of it, and out of it, three million dollars of it. Um, it's just it's a lot of money you know, to send very difficult uh, for them, but we're we're going to come back at it in a few weeks and see what goes. Uh, the other thing I'll tell you is that we spent money with all the administrators. I asked them to come in and we start talking about the coronavirus and what we could do, uh, what sort of laws we could put in place to try to deal with it and uh, communicate that it's serious and that we have to take it seriously. Um, we, I came out with a memo, I hope I sent it to all of you, uh, of what we came up with, uh, several steps that we're going to take, including curtailing field trips, uh, trying to keep um, adults congregating together, um, uh, hand washing, uh, trying, to, home trying to get staying. the kids, uh, you know, furniture uh, disinfected uh, often, trying to make sure that the buildings are clean, where they able to use. And also trying to educate the kids about what they can do. My son said he washed his hands five times today. Well, <laughs> We're making them into obsessive compulsive. Well, I guess he got the message. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Somebody gave it to him. He's nuts. But we all, you know, we all kind of pledged that we were going to do this in a united way. And, um, I, you know, there's some, there's some other ramifications, not necessarily here, but there's a Washington trip scheduled in uh, the, the middle school in, in, uh, in Bethel. The, there's an overseas trip in April uh, to uh, several cities in Poland and, uh, you know, all those things were just saying, no, you get your money back or put it off till it's a safe time. Um, you know, it's just, we're surrounded by cases now around the states, around us, New Hampshire's got some, New York's got some, Quebec's got some, 
and Massachusetts has some. So it's only a matter of time, and I don't want to be pessimistic, but I think if we can start to work with kids and their families about making sure that we are proactive about this, um, we'll have a better chance of not having it involved in our lives here. So, uh, so anyway, uh, you did get a copy of it, and I think I asked to send it out to the boards. I don't want to scare anybody, but I no, no, no. think it would be take this seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in general, you know, I think a good question about people travel. Yeah, basically, if we know of anyone in our district that's I mean, just coming out of spring break, you know, it's kind of a far travel, but is there anyone that's traveled? Not to go to the rack of areas or right. just here at Stockton. Right. 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 Yeah, well, I mean, the, 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 the guidance that Bruce sent out, you know, specifically says that if you've you know, if you've returned to Vermont from Iran, South Korea, Japan, Italy, or China, you're supposed to be calling the health department and, and letting them know that. Um, I got a, uh, an interesting memo f uh, to a mailing list of people that are uh, Google Suites for Education administrators that talked about, pointed out a survey that talked about, especially with teenagers, the amount of germs that are on cell phones and the idea that it's not just washing your hand, that cell phone that you take in the bathroom and you put down on the surface where everyone else's stuff is and everything else, you know, are, are things that, you know, we need to be uh, uh, aware of, just that there's a lot of, you know, it's not time to panic, it's not time to, 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 to wrap ourselves in saran wrap, but it's, well, you know, it's something you know, to be aware of. We're only going to follow two sources, too, that was another thing we kind of agreed to. There's a lot of misinformation nation out about all of this, so we're going to try to stay with the CDC <laughs> and also uh, the, the local officials here in Vermont. Uh, uh, I know that the Secretary of Education has been uh, sending uh, quite a bit of information out. I've been trying to forward that to people, uh, but there's, there's all kinds of um, information that's now out there, and I just don't think um, picking and choosing uh, all kinds of different uh, sources, we think we should stick to the ones that are tried and true, and that is the CDC and, and Vermont health officials uh, here. So, anyway, uh, so everybody's doing that throughout the issue. That's all I have. <laughs> all right. Uh, principals? Um, here at Slackers, we have received our um, safety audit report from our district um, inspection, however you want to word that. The gentleman who came and spent the day with me walking through everything. Um, and we can share that with the board in executive session at another time. It's considered an intelligence document because it talks about what could be threatening. Um, to the area or problematic for the area. Um, there's also the opportunity to apply for some grant funding for some of the areas that you think is urgent or need to be the best. Great. So we can go so that the next, um, next meeting then, you know? Yeah, we can. If we feel like we're in a good place with the budget and other things. And, <laughs> and yeah. Okay. And that same gentleman will come next Monday and spend the day with me. And okay. we'll walk through the garage just to build an order of things. Um, I'm going to anticipate the same type of report, which will be just additional good information for us. Um, again, it should be, um, it should be discussed in the executive session. Um, both schools uh, took, as Bruce said, um, the information from the uh, principal's meeting around the coronavirus back to the schools. Uh, we actually had a great morning meeting this morning. We talked about cold viruses and flu viruses and this new virus. Kids were were very calm and collective about the whole thing. That's sort of our job to educate youngsters around these basic hygiene issues is where it amounts to in elementary schools. While at the same time not frightening them or you know making them unduly anxious. Um, the reality is that uh, the virus is not uh, attacking children as much as it is adults. Uh, we're both planning on um, ways to keep the schools open if we have a heightened number of adults who cannot come to school. 
Um, the CDC is giving us great advice. Um, Bruce is passing along um, really useful advice as soon as he gets it. As I said, the goal for us is to try and keep kids healthy, keep our adults healthy, and open our, keep our schools open. Because once you have to close the school, it impacts so many situations. Nurses can't go to the hospital. People can't work for Green Mountain Bower. Drug drivers can't go to work because they've all got youngsters to take care of. So um, the goal is to just look at our uh, everyday procedures inside of our school from the perspective of hand washing, staying home if you're sick, and there's a term they call social distancing, which schools are a little guilty of. And we love to get kids together in big groups and you know, hold hands and, and sing kumbaya and all that good stuff. <laughs> and what we're trying to do now is say, we have to do these things that are important to education with a little more distance. So we had faculty meetings this afternoon. Teachers are looking at simple things like rearranging some of the furniture in their room to make more rooms for desks. Uh, we're going to do morning meeting a little differently instead of sitting in a big circle. For those of you that have been to one of our morning meetings, we're still going to sit in pods um, and monitor the number of young people we have absent, monitor both adults and, and children for symptoms. Uh, one of the things I found interesting, I just want to share it because I've been sort of shaking my head all day about it. Uh, the, the folks who wrote this article must know teachers very well because they said what you need to do when a teacher gets sick is to have them immediately leave the building. And what teachers tend to do is go to the office, check in, tell people they're leaving, go to the copy or make a few extra copies for their lesson plans, <laughs> walk down the hall and tell their friend to cry. And if they do have this virus, they just walk through all those areas. And I thought, they know teachers really well because that's how teachers exit the book. So um, I think Wendy and I are learning a lot about uh, how we can improve the practices inside our own building to sort of heighten our ability to not transmit this as quickly. Right? Thank you. All right. Uh, then moving into uh, the discussion items. I just said a follow-up. Um, like, likes, comments. Do we have any follow-up on this? <clears throat> we have our second quote from our hunters um, to, to guarantee that um, the boxes we put in are ADA accessible. Okay. And we are looking at that. We actually had some of ours in place, uh, two of them that we had in place with only really one option for what you replace it with. So we went, we went forward with that. Um, and ours have been uh, replaced, uh, the bubblers have all been replaced. The one I was most concerned about was in the um, preschool classroom. That's the one where we had to replace the faucet. That was taken care of over vacation. Although now we have a little electrical issue, we're waiting on an electrician. But in terms of the pipes and the land, that's been taken on. All right. Any other questions for the administration? All right. Uh, discussion items 9.1 in Vision Rochester Group, Amy. I will give the floor to Robert. Oh, I'm uh, representing the, the uh, uh, school building repurposing subcommittee of the Vision of Rochester. Uh, and it is not only our committee, but a number of other committees are looking at um, uh, and brainstorming on uses of the building that is not going to be used for school. Uh, uh, for the school, uh, we're in the very beginning of the brainstorming stage, so we're not coming up with any proposal. I just want to make a step back and, and just make a quick summary. If you look at the two buildings, you really have four pieces. You have the south part part of the elementary building, and then the north part, which encompasses the the, the gym and the kitchens and one uh, classroom. Then you have uh, the uh, high school building, which encompasses the, uh, the west portion, which is the um, home ec, art shop and auditorium. And then you have the east side, which is all classrooms and offices. So just in my personal looking at it, it seems to me, unless you're going to do a lot of capital expenditure as a school, what you really want is the, the north end of the elementary, the west end of the, uh, of the high school, and then one of the other pieces. Okay, now we understand that you only want to have one building, but uh, we're envisioning that 
you know, rather than spending a lot of money for, for capital expense, that these are useful, uh, is a useful configuration right now. The other piece of whichever building you choose is easily, easily isolated from the school from a security standpoint. Now, we're just in the gathering, information gathering state right now, but we know that there we're identifying issues, um, some of which are, are uh, identified with your engineering stuff. But I mean, there's things like uh, 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 a hazard mitigation, you know, part one of the buildings is in the, or a portion of it is in the floodplain. Uh, we're looking at, you know, there's energy considerations, there's certainly the, the uh, High school building that um, needs a revamp of its heating systems and such. But there's also grants available. If there's uh, um, there's some organizations that are doing major projects for for energy um, and for you know there's efficiency Vermont. There's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of legwork, and we we as uh, we have a number of uh, volunteers and we're willing to do the footwork to go and make investigations and present ideas and such. We understand that probably the piece that would be taken out that would not be school would become a, a part of the, uh, the, uh, um, the town, the municipal building. So there's lots and lots of issues to, to work on and, and identify that's outside the scope of what you're looking at, which is just purely on the education portion. Uh, we also realize that it will make it easier for you mm -hmm. if you want to get if the, uh, if the municipality owns one of the buildings, it can work out how to use that piece of the school or share the piece that the school needs. So I think it will become a win-win situation. So what we're looking for is um, see if you're interested, uh, see if we can cooperate. Uh, and we're not looking for any official sanction, but some cooperation, for instance, we may want to do some, do some um, investigation of you know, like efficiency for and things like that and bring that information back to your administrators. Uh, we also would like to look through you know, take some tours and, and we'd like to have access to your engineering report and, and such. So I just wanted to get a sense from the board if this is something you're interested in. Can I ask that please? Sure. Uh, my, I have to check that I'm also part of the school committee group. So, uh, I think the three items that we listed as our agenda, uh, the top subject item was the ideas for repurposing the school and to make that uh, a public outreach, you know, within the, the combined communities uh, in, the, in the form of brainstorming sessions, just to even find out what the public buy-in is for repurposing the high school building. I'm not going to buy any sections of my mind at this. <laughs> and, uh, to explore options for ownership and um, to, you know, basically get the blessing of the board to, to have this group motivate to work with the board. We got we presented in front of the Rochester Select Board and they gave us their blessing to go forward and we couldn't go forward without also uh, approaching you and asking for some sort of blessing so that this group can function and work with you to gather information and, uh, and let us know what you need in terms of reports and take it one step at a time. This, so, is, this is not an official, uh, this is just an ad hoc commu uh, community uh, gathering. It's not official, we don't need to be restrained by the, the, the open meeting laws and such because we're not an official subcommittee. I mean, and who knows what happens in the future. We're not government. Yeah, but we, we want to work with the board to present ideas and such and, and also work with the select board to, to move forward. This is not a, going to be something that's quick. You know, it's <laughs> going to take a lot of time and a lot of work. And we think this is a, an opportune kind since you're, um, since you're uh, you know, looking at building configuration. We are at the time for this. We will um, does anyone, uh, well, we can certainly uh, let, because this is kind of going into the community engagement piece, we can we can, we can can bleed into that a little bit. Well, Does anyone have any comments or, 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 or questions? Well, I, I think, yes, I think you should see them. Okay. Well, I just want to call you to the... Oh, 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 sorry. sorry. I'm sorry. I was, well, what, but first of all, let's, let's talk about the time for a minute, though. Do we want to? Do we want to continue to?
extend the time? Oh, and, 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 well, I think uh, the community engagement update is fairly aware. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I understand. Um, so uh, it does seem to blend in with community building report, though I think that needs to be doubled by itself. I mean, clearly these people will be, I think be well served by looking at the building report. I think this is a very exciting opportunity yes, for us to so. have Absolutely. some some uh, community engagement, some community okay. members that have some passion about some different ideas of what could happen with the building. There's no decisions that they're going to be making by any means. That's that's going to be between our board and the select board, but this this gives a lot of, excuse me, for them to do some of the legwork and to, to be able to have some meetings that they throw out a bunch of different ideas and just to, to talk about what is some of the community buy-in for some of these ideas. Um, I mean, we have town offices that, that potentially could go in there. We have people looking for senior center space. We have people looking for child care space. There's a lot that we just don't even know about, and I think this community engagement group would be a, a great asset. Okay, so let's, let's take a couple more minutes, I think, and, and, and go on about that. I think the first step, we really need to know the community engagement for both Rochester and South Grace, because we're not absolutely um, sure. just going with what Rochester wants. You were up, you, you, you were first. Um, I want to clarify that they are a separate group, and that we're still looking to get rid of one of the buildings. That's, that's what I was under the impression that was happening to unburden. That was that the that was one of the things that the report was uh, designed was was a charge to look at. It is a discussion. One building. It is a discussion. Yes. It's not been decided by anybody if that's the way we're going to go. So it's a discussion. Part of this discussion too. If that is what happens, then the repurposing of the building that is being but but out of respect for the way the towns are working together with the school buildings, we're here, you know, to say that this is as part of the community engagement we're interested and we are open, of course, to Stockbridge people participating in the conversation. Joanne? I'd like um, to have the um, the blessing of the board to form a committee in Stockbridge for the divorce of this merch, please. So I'm going to start my own committee. I'll call it the Divorce Committee, and we're going to start this tomorrow. May I have the blessing? Um, community members can start whatever sort of committees they Evidently, want. Evidently, because this is sure. crazy. We voted, the community stock, we voted for the merger with the closure of one of the, of the Rochester buildings. We, that's why we said yes, and you know it, Carl. I'm not disagreeing with you. Okay, As a matter so of fact, I'm saying crazy, like, part of this building and part of this building come. I on. think I think letting the Rochester community have a have a discussion about if, if the board let's 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 take a deep breath for a minute. Let's go back and remember how this works. If the board, the school board, uh, chooses to. Uh, not operate in one of the buildings, if the school board chooses to only operate in one building, the first thing that has to happen is the town of Rochester has the opportunity to acquire that building and its underlying assets and debts that's fine, right? uh, for one dollar. And if fine. that's what these people want to talk about, they can talk about what they're going to do with okay. their one dollar. So can we say one building, not half, the quarter, and this, and that, and one and a half, and three? No, 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 no. no. Okay. I mean, we're not no, we can, we, we can, we can say that. What you're so saying. what you're saying is the Stockbridge voters agreed to the merger based on the closure of one of the buildings. Now, as a board, as people who are voted in to represent the voters of their town, you are not going to do that. You're going to do what you guys feel. Well, that's absolutely not true at all. What we're doing is what we're doing is the, what they're doing. It's not in conjunction with what we're no, doing. and that's totally. If fine. the town of Rochester, if when 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 the school board says we choose the elementary building or we choose the high school building, the town of Rochester has the option to take the other building in statute for a dollar. Right. And this committee we're seems like they're interested in exploring that possibility. Right. So I'm not we're, sure. We're waiting to hear which building anyway. I mean, we've right. already that's, kind of established that. Yes. And so I don't know. So letting them go different. forward to. Right. So so they're not setting policy. So they're not setting procedure. They're not making decisions for the board. They're going to do some work and they'd like to, 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 to participate so at the community meeting. We've been working since October at the building committee. Correct. And we're going to be, we'll be dealing with that. We'll be dealing with that in a minute. This is not. This
This is not anything to do with what the building committee is doing. I know, but although, although it's interesting. Clarify. That could be nice to have you heard. Are not going to be we need to, My we question need to was be, to make sure. We need to make talk one at a time, because that is the way Robert's rules of order, and you need to be recognized by the board chairman to speak. That is the way we need to work. And if you can't abide by those rules, then you'll be asked to leave. So we okay. need to So speak. Joanne, go ahead and finish. And I, need to I, I, may, I, may I start a commitment for that? You, you, did, you can start at Vision Stockbridge just like they started okay, in Vision Rochester. That's what I'm looking for. Thank you. Okay. Do you have anything more? So what I was asking was that you as a board are not going to look at these options and say, oh, hey, we'll lease part of the building, but we'll still keep the building. That was my question, that we're still moving towards getting rid of one of the buildings. That's, that's, that's been the charge of the committee that we need to, we, we, we do not, we can't afford, in general, the principle is we can't afford to operate two buildings. Okay. So that's, that's, that's been the goal and, and the direction. That, 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 that we've been, been moving towards, yes. But I think to clarify, let me have to clarify here for a second. First of all, as a general thing, I've heard nothing but great things about the Envision Rochester. I mean, it wasn't just, but it's not just, I think to replicate what they're doing in Stockbridge would be great. I mean, it's not just a school committee. How many committees did you guys come up with? Committees. Multiple committees of doing different things to Envision. Yes. Yeah, I mean, it, and, and I heard the way it was organized. Everybody had a, had input. I think it's far more than just and, a and school. I just want to add that it wasn't just people from Rochester participating. People from other towns who were interested in some of the same focuses that because we're really a Clintown area uh, have come to that meeting and are participating on the committee. So we're not, just because it's called the Vision Rochester does not mean we're isolating it to only Rochester. No, I, 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 but I just want to say that the first, one of the first topics of the agenda of that group was to explore options for ownership for the building that you don't want, all right? But we're not committed to say you have to sell a building. That is not our scope. It's just if you are going to be getting rid of one of the buildings, we are interested in the options for ownership and in repurposing that building. Not to say it isn't going to be repurposed for a, you know another kind of education, adult ed or community college or whatever. But we want to explore and explore the community because we are all in the same community. And we will all benefit if we can get the input and really find out what everybody would like. I'm not talking okay. about public education options in the property tax plan. I'm talking about other options. All right. Yes. So uh, just quickly, as far as the, when I mentioned the piece, you know, there's, if you're facing with, um, and we're looking at, it would behoove both the town and the school if there's a piece of one of the building that's shared. That doesn't mean that necessarily the school owns it. But it may it may work into their overall plan and keep them from having to um, having to uh, invest in capital funds in building if they know and have a le even a legal uh, agreement that they can share part of the other building. So we're just trying to present more options. I guess one of the stimulus is that you know you're sort of operating in the vacuum not knowing what else is going to be happening in Rochester. So we're giving you some feedback. And yeah. trying to give some more, some more options. So. Absolutely, and I think if you were uh, at the last meeting or you watched the Orca media broadcast of the last meeting, one of the, one of the uh, 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 items that uh, uh, we talked about was, you know, just what, you know, uh, what the next steps are going to be as the building committee uh, finishes reviewing its, its report, and that is community engagement across both communities with a, with a, a guided and uh, hopefully mediated conversation. And I think there'll be space for everybody to talk and feel that they were heard, or hopefully feel that they were heard, and we'll be able to, to move that forward and hear from both communities as, as to what's going on. Can you say your names again for me? I'm Robert Mayer. Catherine K H H R Y N Shanklin S C H E N K M A N. Shanklin S C H 
when you form that community engagement committee, you talk about how to get those people to the table. It includes phone work, it includes knocking on doors, it can include coffee conversations, it can include quite a different, um, wide variety of strategies she's used based on the community. Um, that the community that is, community is charged with right, to walk them the tools to get people to these two right. separate meetings. And then and the one. And that is so obvious she did I did clarify with her while you target trying to get a lot of people at the meeting, like Bonnie uses the example of every seventh registered voter you call and personally invite, it's always an open meeting and more than but you want the more people at the table, the better. To have all the voices truly heard. Sounds good. Yeah, it does sound very good. She, she came very highly recommended. I called a couple other school districts that she said she worked with, and they yeah. Can you name which district? Uh, she works with Mount Ave um, School District, which is where she first came recommended with. She's starting in Addison. She did work with Essex. Um, she was actually kind of excited at the opportunity to work with a smaller, um, two smaller communities. Her, uh, sure. I mean. Her name is Sue McCormick. And it's um, McCormack, not Nick. That <laughs> originally spelled it. Um, is, so. Okay. That sounds really good. Right. She will have a full, like, detail. And she apologized, but she was working through some stuff with some towns for town meetings. So. <laughs> <laughs> she was a little busy. Well, especially if she's working with Addison, they've got quite a. Yeah. She's just yeah. starting there, and that's expanded from a different conversation that starts in the other school district. So, wow. She was very honest about that. That's great timing with 12 seconds. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> You can tell the people that work with the timekeepers or not. Yes. I just wanted to, I noticed in your minutes that uh, Rachel had, uh, at your last meeting, mentioned the uh, uh, Working Challenge, Community Challenge Grant that got awarded. You might have read something about that in the paper. Mm -hmm. And I heard from John Carroll, who is our administrative head, a part of the consortium that Stockbridge may be interested. And this community engagement, that's was, is, is essentially what this is about. And the first uh, extended uh, outreach to involve the community is on March 25th, and it's going to be held at the back of school. So the, the, the five subjects that this particular planning grant uh, uh, has addressed, we will then, we're working with the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston, that's the funding agency, so we just got the $15,000 planning grant, and that's going to lead to a larger grant, the implementation grant, of three hundred thousand dollars, a hundred grand a year. So right now the consortium towns involve Rochester and Randolph and Chelsea and Bethel and Brookfield. But Josh emailed me and he said, "We heard that Stockbridge may be interested in this." So we wanted you to know it is not too late for Stockbridge to join in on this. How and do, how do we how, get, yeah, how do we do how that? Do we I brought this for you. But but the first meeting, March twenty fifth, is going to be at the Bethel Middle School. And it, they're, they're doing right because it's free food and free child care. So they're registering through the Bethel University. If you go to that website, there's a sign up. And then I brought you this for your okay. for one minute. So that, but uh, we're happy to have Stockbridge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, anything else on the, the community engagement update? Uh, so unless you have other questions of things. No, I, I did not. Okay. 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 Yes. So may I update our volunteers with estimated dates and process? Um, I think the board has to approve her proposal. Does that make sense? Like it does. I, I, I don't. I don't know. I guess yeah, it's not really have, my decision. We don't have. We don't have a proposal. Right. So she hasn't given us her proposal yet. Right. So we don't. We. we yeah, don't information. Are you comfortable with that? That. Maybe information on information. Uh, yeah. I, guess. I mean, this is a public meeting. So. Right. 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 I mean, I think. So I think that as far as we're looking, investigating. You know, the, 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 we're looking to, to for a process that's going to begin in May. The general overview. Yeah. So just yeah. keep people updated. Yeah. That we're I think. I think having a you know getting getting some general information. 
a time window is is is, is valid and valuable. Um, I mean, certainly, I think we'll ask about that. Once we actually have the proposal, the board will be discussing that in detail. This is what she's right. suggesting we do. This is the cost of what she's suggesting. Right, and, and, and this is the time frame and the window that, that, that uh, we're These hoping to accomplishing this, this, that, or the other. Will this be done before town meeting or before the school meeting? The school budget is now. The, 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 cop, the, 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 the proposal will be discussed and hopefully approved and dealt with in, at, at the, the April regular meeting so that we would, we would hopefully be able to, at the, at the school meeting, you know, I would assume that, that if, once she's booked, we can get the information, I would think we'd be able to get the information on the calendar and be able to announce that uh, at the school meeting. Okay. And a little uh, more, so a little more at the April meeting. meeting. This meeting won't be after we vote on budget. Correct. Yeah, I think this process would be quite a, a longer process <coughs> than, than just a couple of weeks. Six months. <laughs> Are you kidding me? The, the example I kept asking her about is not a school district, because that's the one I'm most familiar with her work. And she said that process took six months. So we're going to have both buildings open for another year. Paying for heat, paying for electricity. Well, I don't think that that's necessarily the question that she posed to the this community engagement group was was what does each town view as their children's education for the future? She not does not which building well, should be well, open I mean, or closed. She We're does have a knowledge of the building situation. Right, but I guess maybe that's my question to the board. Are we going to do that again? We might. I mean, I, I think that I, I, I'm. I, I don't imagine that. We're, I mean, we're we're going to be getting a, a, a budget that I assume has operated, you know, for for the 2021 school year that has operational costs for both build, for both buildings. Is that correct? Yes. Really. Well, it raises it raises a very good point. Um, I mean, I hear you. Uh, we we are we are overdue in the decision. Mm -hmm. In some ways, I think people could say we were overdue with this in some ways. Even though we've gone through this process, we're now actually starting another process that's similar to the building issue to go through the community engagement to get to a decision. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, I, I mean, that's... We're kind that's, of at the same point as we were when the building was Well, I, 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 you know, we have a lot more information, but I don't feel we've... Well, let's, let's we do just. Let's let's move into the building committee the, the building committee piece of that and and, uh, and 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 solve that decision. So here's where the building committee uh, uh, stands. One of the things that I found out today, going through and trying to dig up uh, some documents, was that somehow in the course of since the February meeting, I turned moving files into from one from one inbox into a folder into a forwarding rule. So a number of the, of the, the, the emails from people like Joanne and Robert Gardner saying, say, uh, are we going to do anything more with this building committee? What happened? Uh, got ignored by me because I didn't see them. They, they bypassed my inbox completely. And I apologize for that. Um, as far as I see it, and I sent an email out about this today, there were the two reports that Ethan asked for at the last meeting that are public, uh, you know, public knowledge the, 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 that have been shared. The board, the, the building committee, uh, the, the board can say, okay, the building committee came, gave, gave these two, they gave these two reports. Um, I've heard back from a number of people that are comfortable saying, just let the let the let the board have the two reports. The board, the board at its at its pleasure can uh, can uh, say that the building committee is dissolved. It's done its work. One thing on this, just because you're part of the committee, you may would it serve us better? If I or somebody else okay. acted as chairman for this discussion. Sure, I was just going through the, yeah. the, no, the, the options and trying and trying to frame it. Like sure, identifying people and stuff like that, just because you're a party of this. That's sure, exactly. absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll be happy to Sure. So the the, the 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 email I'd sent out said we can the building committee can convene another meeting to uh, to, to decide. You know, this is the report and this is what we wanted to say. Um, the building committee can, uh, you know, decide that they're not going to do anything more, and that the, you know, it's the, the information, the, the the two different reports that were presented uh, that the board has, the board can do with what it wants. The board can decide that it wants to, uh, uh, you know, dissolve the to dissolve the ad hoc committee. Does the board have two different reports? Um, I'm looking at it. Okay, they want to be. Sorry. Um, 
Uh, we can print them if you'd like. I, I think that, that, we, that there was trouble getting complete consensus uh, from the committee, and I don't feel that any additional meetings is going to provide any more consensus. I think the best thing for us to do is to, to present these two reports plus anybody else's um, comments, additions, deletions um, that they see maybe was omitted from these documents or um, uh, that they don't like that is in this document and present them all to the board as this is the draft and this is as far as the building committee could get. Um, I'm looking at both these reports right now and it's a little confusing because they look very similar. Um, yes. I have two of them here. They just need to be copied if that's yeah. easier than printing. Or, that'd be great. Um, I do also I have um, this one which is three and this one which is two. This I printed out today from your email. If you want to take a quick look at it, but I, yeah, I printed out an email. So this one. That is one of them, and that's the other one. We gotta take care of this. Um, I, and I do have um, a, an email that had was basically Rob's additions that okay. you feel. Can we get copies? Felt that, and I'm not sure if you included those because I think I did. But okay. we can, we can Why don't we get a copy of these? Um, and As Ethan said last last month, more what paper is more paper. I'm a little confused about is um, uh, I mean I've seen Joanne and Carl talk to each other um, in terms of being on the different sides of these two reports. There's no names on these reports as right. far as who's on what side or who. And I don't, who, I don't, well, whose name goes on these reports? It does. I don't think that would be necessary. That we don't really need to be pointing out specific. No, 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 uh, no I'm just saying. Opinion. But I mean, is there a spokesperson? Because clearly, this is a disagreement, and it seems like I, I just don't know whose report is whose. Well, they were both written by Carl. With well, no, no, no. Lindy, Lindy, Lindy was the other one. You know, the one I wrote was based off of the last meeting we had in December, based on right. the direction that we decided from the community. And then I mean that some felt there needed to be a narrative um, to go with it. And so then there is a narrative written, but people don't agree with the narrative. And I think, I'll be honest, I, I think it should be a fact presentation, personally. Um, because that's what we were charged with. But then we were tasked last time to meet again together to decide whether we were going to present two or present one. And because of Carl's email situation, we did not meet. I do feel that the building committee did find the task to be, um, it, was, it was quite a hard task, really. To And we really found a lot of, um, there was a lot of people at the table that just came from a lot of different perspectives, and it really all kind of came out on the table. And I think th these reports with these narratives do help to try to uh, understand some of those situations. There was some talk before I remember of saying if um, <coughs> whether the reports talk about the divorce and of the merger or not. And there was some talk that there would be some financial numbers included in that and the implications of that if that happened. Right, and that the building committee came back on. Yeah. Sure. I would just like to say that it was frustrating on the internet because we were actually given advice by our superintendent to not do it. I'm not, not, do, not, not do, do it by not suggest. We were told not, that it was not a good idea to be putting our comments and whatever in, in, in and combining. Reply all versus, versus replying out. Yeah. Right. So there are people in the, in the committee that didn't answer. Willis didn't chime in as a lot of people. Willis, no, Willis, Willis did chime in to me directly. Right, because if you just reply directly. If you, if you reply to the, to, to the main person, so Willis, Willis is, is, is happy with the, the four-page version. Okay, finish, finish. It's just frustrating that we couldn't get together with all of our ideas. Okay, okay. so. Can I comment about the, the unmerger for it? Well, we had started to go down a road that we would um, investigate all possible um, building situation scenarios. Uh, with, nine, and, and it was like nine or 10. Nine or well, yep. But then that got um, very, we started to realize that we couldn't be as factual with that because that was not the information that was in the report. So we had to really step back and say, our charge is to understand what is in the report 
What are these numbers? And numbers regarding fund merger are not in the report. That's right. So, um, but we do, we do on the other hand want to acknowledge that that was an issue that was brought up. Um, so it, it's been a very difficult uh, narrative to try to create. Um, when she gets copies, there is some numbers in it. I feel there is not all the numbers in it. Does that um, need to be? Well, that's, it, it, it is a set of numbers, but, and again, so that would be, from my point of view, maybe something that I feel was omitted from the, from the document. That, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, I'm not fault. But that was because we decided in our last meeting to only use the minimum cost. Oh, that's the So the report, though it's tough without the report in front of anybody, but there's several choices on how much you can fix or not fix, or add or not add to each building. Priority. And um, priority level. And um, we decided when we got in over our head with the nine choices to just look at the minimum column. Like at the bare minimum, this is what it's going to cost. Right, and when you go to building, which is what's included in the report. It is um, each cost per building for one, for two buildings total for our district to use, not for three buildings. But each building comes with a cost, correct? Yes, each building right? comes like with a cost. Right, like there's three, like, what it costs to fix stock rates, what it costs. Right, there's no, there's no cost for status quo to, to continue as we're going now, which is in the report. Um, we don't look at, we don't look at some of the, the, the we, we ignored, we, we made the decision that again, we were not going to look at, um, they gave, they gave kind of a gold, like a Cadillac standard uh, a level of, if we fixed everything, and we, we quickly, we quickly said that that really, is, 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 is not a, a realistic cost, and so we, we, we agreed to look at just the, the, you know, the, the, minimum, the, the, the minimum cost and not the columns that talked about keeping both buildings open. So, but that also if includes I can go back, unless I, additions. If I can go back to so the main difference between these two reports. No, I can't say that. Okay, you don't know yet. D the difference between. Um, the two reports. I think it's just the is narrative. The narrative. One is just the word in the narrative. I have them in front of me. Okay. I think okay. it's just the narrative. It's, it's, it's the narrative, and then some of the numbers are, are, are broken out different, or broken out in a greater level of, of, of detail and analysis in one than the other. Here we go. I think there's some questions about what the conclusions are. important moment to take to give everyone the report and take a chance to look at it for a moment or two, and then we'll get back to color. So let's just relax for a moment. Let everybody take a look at the report. Back to 
front two pages. Listen to Amy, she's telling you. Back to front two. One's a four pager. One's a four pager, and that one is four.
four times, three times. And we haven't met since January, December. Yep. So it's not like we've been arguing for three months. We've been begging for a meeting to finish this. And all we've been doing is sending emails back and forth since that last meeting. So that's why it's frustrating for me because I feel like um, people are building them on their own, which is great, and I, there's not that much difference in these. I, I think we can come to one, one product. So like, it's not like we've been meeting a lot. We haven't. We certainly sure have not met in, uh, in, what, six weeks, a month? Right. Two months? No, it's kind of like that. Yeah. So that's like close. We've asked yeah. for a meeting. I would, I would like, I would like the board, the committee, to meet one more time and pull this together to be something that is a central document. We've got to have something to be able to, you know, we're really overdue. What type of this board are you looking for? What? what exactly is it that you're looking for? What the, what the report says. I mean, that's why I'm a little confused about seeing assumptions made by the committee. That has nothing to do with the report. Right. That has to do with assumptions made by the committee. I don't, as a board member, I don't want that. I want, what does this report say? say? Well, I guess we had a real hard time when we're starting to talk about, and it says like in the elementary building, we're talking about the, that we're only reporting that this is the cost for the Rochester campus to be in one building, which includes an addition, because we need to put an addition on to for what we've lost in the high school building. So suddenly we're like, well, is that Tech real? Is that, you know, is that really the direction that we would want to be going in? Probably not, but is it in the report? Yes. So it's tough to report out on that. Good, thank you. If you look at, for example, if you look at the report, um, when you look at the way they put everything into the uh, uh, high school as the, as the option, putting everything into the high school, they uh, uh, divide out and make, uh, at the end of the, the theater wing, is where they make the multi-purpose room and the, the, the kitchens and, and, and the classrooms. And so the space that they carve out and remodel into uh, the multi-purpose room gym, um, is about half the space of the current gym, and the art space and the music space are about also half the space of the current gym. The report does not talk about um, uh, modifying the elementary school building to, re to, to, to reconfigure the gym space into the same square footage of, of elementary school gym space and art and music space. It instead puts a, a million dollar addition on the side of the building. So I think where the committee had, had, had issues was you know, those numbers are in the report. You can identify them. The, the, where the committee had issues is around saying, is that the type of analysis we want to be presenting? Because, or do we just say, if you add up all the minimum column, it's a million four. You know, that's all we have because that was the only charge that was given to the study for the company to go and look at. So Correct. I think it's fair to put a note in that those things were not asked. We were just, we just asked this company to come in and look at our building, right. not to try and be creative. Right. 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 Sorry. Bruce, Bruce, Bruce. 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 I take back to this. Uh, you're asking the building committee to, for charging, perhaps for charging, the building committee to compose an executive summary with recommendations. That doesn't mean you have to take any of them, but is from that what they, is I, that what I don't think we need to get to there. Well, 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 that's, that's. I don't know that it will include recommendations. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to summarize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't understand what the harm is in trying to do that. Well, I also, here's, here's the other way we can go about this, is to take an example from the Supreme Court. Is that we have a minority view and a, and a minor, and then we allow minority views. Of, of of these of what was your term? Because I think it's much better than assumptions. You said what's the um, recommendation? Recommendations, or, yeah, yeah. So I think coming together with the basic numbers, and I know that's even a hard question to do. Basic numbers with some annotation that it doesn't include this, and it doesn't include this, and it doesn't include this, and then recommendations, and maybe even counter recommendations as needed. 
And that's something, and it's one document, and yes, we're going to have disagreement on it, but at least it's one document. And this is kind of a failure. It is. And, 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 I, and, I, and I think the committee, and I know the people on the committee, and I do believe you can rise better up to, to make something with the disagreement still in it, but just not. Do well, do you think you need a mediator? I mean, you suggest well, that's what that. I suggest. No, I, I don't feel that um, the building committee should be making any recommendations on the educational, uh, the education of our kids, in which that's what they you would have them do by recommending a use of one building versus the use of another building, okay. the use of one space versus the use of so, another space. I think it could simply it's just report out it's money. It costs this much with this recommendation and this is the work it includes. Is that what you're looking for? I guess I'm asking for a clarification. Yeah, I don't think it needs to include records. These right. Include and records. this number includes this work. Similar. I think what the original report included was sort of what ifs. There, there are no recommendations. No one says you should do this instead of that or this should be a priority versus that. I'm, I'm quite sure. Beyond safety, beyond safety and, 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 and scope, beyond, yes. Beyond some safety. Just wanted to clarify that. Go ahead. I'm quite sure. I feel strongly that the committee, we probably would not be successful making recommendations. I just don't think we're there. I think it has been generated. I think your point is good that it doesn't need to include recommendations. So if the board's looking for recommendations, I think we have to find some other vehicle. I don't think this building is going to need the vehicle. I think it's early to look for recommendations. What you originally charged us to do was to thoroughly read the um, engineering report, understand it, synthesize it, summarize it, and bring it back to you. In, I think we're, in a version that could be presented to the public. I think we're, yes, I think mm -hmm. we're admitting that there, we even had some difficulty doing that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's what the building committee is, is yeah. saying. Perhaps, perhaps we could combine these two into one, but we weren't able to do that in our last meeting. Or we didn't have two versions. We, no, we just agreed no, by numbers. No, no, I'm sorry. No, let me right. We, we just had numbers. We, should sure. we never had a meeting, so that's the problem. Yeah, we failed because I kept begging for a meeting. We were supposed to get together. And if we had gotten together with even these two, we could have come up with something. If you had sure. a meeting with the two, then you we never had right. yeah. they These yeah. were written outside of the meeting. We yeah. never went to the meeting and worked on okay. it. Then hold up. Then I, I can't. We we're going to go on. They can go around and around here. A little bit, no, so. I just want you to know we didn't completely yeah. fail because we no, never. No, no, I'm saying this process, it I would agree with this. Right, because it wasn't actually done in a meeting. Okay. It was done on its own after, mm -hmm. privately. Jenny, I have a question. I would, well, 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 I, I, I would like, I think we should come up with a instruction to the committee, those of us who are not on the committee. And would we like to, um, I would like them to go back and try to come up with a document that they can agree to. And if it excludes recommendations, fine. But if come up with a document that they can agree to submit, that we can then at least hand out to the, because we've spent a lot of money on this report and we need to be accountable to it to the people. Absolutely. Well, we did, and we are, that was, at least that I think we can achieve, yes? And I'm talking right now, I want to talk to Megan and Jamie and, and Jenny. Oh, I don't no, agree, yeah. You're on the committee? No, I'm saying you're not on the committee. Oh. That's why I'm talking to you. Oh. We're the board members who are not on the committee. Okay. And so we, we're sort of helping because I think, you know, you guys are best, you know, it's, and I, and mm -hmm. I, I, but I do want to charge you. I think it's up to us to charge you with something accomplished. I think they, they haven't been looked at together. Yes, they have not. Okay. And I think you did make a good point. If, if we include the minority uh, opinion, then everyone, then you can make one document. It will include what everybody believes or thinks. Is that our direction? I would, yes, I'd like to see one okay. meeting and one document. And, and put in there what you can agree on, and then if you want to put comments after that, then that's acceptable to us. But basically, we're looking for come up with the numbers, come up with the facts, don't come up with. For every plot situation that is reported to us in Black River. Yeah. Do your best. It's not going to be perfect. 
but at least it's one thing that we can then do, which is to take their vote. I'd like to be able to have the time to read these and yeah. then just be able to individually email. Okay, sure. So we're, to be clear, we are charging the committee to meet again and try to, to bring together these two reports into one single report for us. And I don't think these two, I think there's more than these two reports. Yeah. I think there's more discussion. Oh, okay, great, 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 great. Them. Then it's give it's us a final report. Is that the direction? You try to. Yeah, yes, we'll right. attempt that. That includes basic numbers and what work it includes and does not include. Basic numbers. Is that, is that I think we need to basic, basic numbers, basic numbers and, and what work that includes and what work it does not include, like some different situations. And then, so and then I would assume that the board would come up with a narrative, a narrative to be able to ease this into the public. Yes. Yeah, then that would be our job. Our job is to talk about recommendations as a group and things like that, once we have these fair numbers to talk about. Right, because when you start looking at a couple million dollars, it gets pretty oh, yeah. crazy. Believe me. Um, no, I want to just talk to committee members, because we need to finish this up. Um, does that sound That's all I ever wanted was one more meeting. OK, good. And I asked for it several times. OK, good. Then that's your charge, right? Absolutely. Um, we'll, Chairman, you will set that up. Sure. Now your email is working. Uh, yeah. Let's have a date right now. Let's Can we make a date? Right That, yeah, that will never Bonnie doesn't have a calendar. <laughs> so, okay. So then we will do a game. Set a date. Set a date and we can see what Bonnie can make. Can I ask a question? No, actually. I'm afraid Here's not. The dilemma, there's there is actually technically public comment is only allowed in two times. We've been actually very lenient about it, people coming in with comments. Well, it's just related to why we're here. Well, no, I know, but this isn't that. Yeah. This is a different process. We need to get a lot of business. We have a budget to talk about tonight, too. Is there an opportunity to talk? Or there is there's another no, 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 at the end of item 11. There's so. actually three. In addition to myself, there's two other people on the building committee who are here, so I don't know how. Who's going to send the email out to set up the meeting tomorrow right. morning? Carl? I will. No. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and Willis is in here. Yeah. Okay. So make up for it, find a date, Carl. Willis. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly uh, by the next meeting. The yeah, no, I, I think yeah. it, it just it can't. I mean, the, the, the reason I said, you know, yeah. if the board doesn't want to take it back or if the board wants to read it, then let's let's consider having another building committee meeting. Good. If the board wanted to do it itself, then, then we could have closed the committee. Are we done with this and then we'll go on? Mm hmm. I'm just going to relinquish the chair back to you. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, and I'll give it right back to you for the annual report update there. Or do you want to jump to budget? Uh, no, let's get to budget. Poor uh, yeah. town, she's pacing. <laughs> yeah. I suppose let's we'll see that. We've been sitting for a long time since my dad is very sore. <laughs> do you mind letting Ted, do we mind rearranging to let uh, no, Ted have a chance? No, 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 no
Um, how do you want to go about this? Tara, do you want to give us uh, an overview of what we're looking at? The top page is the changes that I worked with Bonnie and Lindsay on looking to react to with your budget. The, I'll let them speak to some of it as well. The very first thing that I want to talk about is bullet point number one. Right. So, latest draft of your audit, not done yet, latest draft, shows a $259,000 surplus. Sorry? Two hundred and fifty-nine thousand. Oh, okay. two thirty. Two thirty-five. Two thirty-five in. And I say that because there are some additional changes that needed to be made upon review of trial balances and of what balances? The trial balances. What's that? The full picture of your budget, outside of your general fund, but all of your funds, all of your revenue, all of your expenses, all of your liabilities, all of your assets. There were still some changes that needed to be made. They were being made right up until yesterday with the auditors. So I only used 235,000. And I also say that because, remember, the very first process in every single audit was to clean up any prior year expenditures and prior year revenues that are in the next fiscal year. So should you use your entire projected surplus and you have something that comes up after the close of the fiscal year, You've already set yourself off to a bad start. So I highly don't recommend using your entire surplus, but that is not my decision to make. That is only my recommendation. You as a board tell me what you're going to do. I only make recommendations. Like your recommendation of 65 for each of the HRA, correct? Yes, yeah. like I recommend. Yeah, that's your recommendation. Okay. So that's the very first part. The last item of the audit that needs to be completed is the fixed assets portion, which I just found out about when everybody was on February vacation. So I sent it out to all of our building administrators and asked them to have their fixed asset updates back to me by the 10th of March. So then we can actually get the physical paper to hand out to all of you on the draft. Can you give me a definition of what fixed assets If you made any updates to your building, if you made any updates to the equipment within your building, so that just needs to be identified now, and because the auditor's fixed assets are tracked within your audit, but they track separately in all the finances. So that's the last piece, and then we'll have our official draft audit for any reports. Okay. Um, can I just, what are these audits supposed to be done? October 31st. Thank you. And what is the reason it's taken so long? Lots and lots of cleanup. Lots of poverty, gotcha. It's a different mess. So, preferably, this will be a much faster process than what's Oh, absolutely. Okay, thank you. <laughs> That's a really good answer. So, you aren't really able to speak to the, um, oh, to that surplus then, where it came from or what. You don't do that. Are you able to? You know why we have that up now. By the looks of the draft that was presented to me the last round, you substantially understand your Oh, what? I'm sorry. Just, 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 <laughs> just, just, in general. Okay. No, absolutely. Use it. How was the over budget? How is that possible? Yeah. How is that possible? You over budget because they, they over budget. They you have to remember the budget that this money is coming from is a budget, at least that Bonnie and I have had any part in creating this budget was created. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing. Sorry. sorry. So the budget, the money where the surplus is coming is from the budget we worked with last year, but how the numbers were created were post-merger. So some of that money may not have been accurate. What? We thought was needed. I don't know. I'm throwing it out there. I it was wasn't part of the guess. It was about to guess at the time. I don't know. I wasn't part of the budget process at that. Right. And we were kind of expecting that this year, looking at these numbers, since we've come through a, a, a full year, we would be able to really see what lines needed more and what lines needed less. Right. Era has also found a number of um, inconsistencies. Not inconsistencies in that someone pocketed money, but inconsistencies in terms of what's where, what amount should it have really been here, should it have been there. 
Wait, a prime example. You have fifteen thousand dollars budgeted for dental insurance for one function code. You're not going to spend fifteen thousand dollars on dental insurance. That's not a function code is one person. So yeah. one, one yeah. person. I mean, it's not. That was not a logical budget move. But that was not anything that you all did. That was how the budget was created from the very beginning. So. Mm -hmm. Do you believe in this circles? I do not believe in anything until I see the final product. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Trust me, so, but verify. <laughs> okay. Um, so we should proceed on your recommendation. We should proceed with caution still. Should we still be looking at trimming the uh, 100000 Based on this, you don't need to. I mean, if you use two hundred thirty-five thousand dollars, if that final audit comes in and we're within the, the realm of that, then you know. But remember, you are over the threshold if you don't have the surplus. So you truly do, as we've all been discussing this entire evening, need to look at restructuring because if you don't continue in this trend, you will be over the threshold penalty, and you will have double tax. Just by the regular things that are going up, health yes, insurance, yes, you know, all that. Everything. You're not alone in that. Yeah. Other yes. districts are facing where they're back against the two, so there has to be change. Have the other districts been using their surplus in their? Really? Yeah. 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 Yeah
having those types of surpluses because when you're budgeting that much extra and you can't figure out where it is, yep. you haven't done a great job of budgeting. So we whether you're 300,000 over or 300,000 under, you've done a full job of budgeting unless you can explain it. But that surplus is because 10 tuition students moved away over the summer, and then that's different. But if you have that kind of surplus, just because you're not accurate in your numbers, that's not good budgeting either. Yeah. So we shouldn't, going forward, be looking at these kinds of surpluses. That would be highly unethical. So, uh, Tara, the line uh, in, 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 in we type on uh, the uh, first revenue page, not the tax page. What page? 88, it's the uh, second to the last, or the last page, the inside side. So the page right. number is the bottom row. Yeah, yeah the page, page number. No, there oh, no, there's not. The right. He's on the revenue row. Oh, okay, got it. Sorry. Yes. Okay. So the 88,000. Okay. The 88,000, $92.59. That was a formula in there, because in the beginning we were over the threshold, and that's what gives us what we need to cut to be under the threshold, and we're already under the threshold, so that's a non applicable number at this point. So really, the, the, to, to hit the threshold, it, it was not the 235 that we, we would need. It was 147 and, 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 and or something like that. Because the, two, the 235 puts us 88,000 into the, into the black. Is that what that number says? Where are you looking? In the draft one that I This little, this wee little number right there. Um, little tan bar. Get your revenue, Lindsay, on the bottom. Yeah, the red, the red table. Thank you. The first draft budget that I presented to you, you needed to cut $327,397.41 right. to be under the threshold. No, right. you need to cut 88000 No, you don't need to cut anything. No, we did. We're 88, we're 88. Thousand dollars under the threshold right now, but my question is: so understanding that, does that number include the fact that we're uh, uh, picking up our uh, four cents merger incentive this year? Because that's so okay. So that's that, 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 that's not we're, 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 but that, that's that's net of that. It's not a gross. Okay. Because we'll, we'll expire another two cents of the tax rate of the, the merger incentive next year. What you're saying is it's a service Right, I see that, right. I just want to know if that 88,000 uh, was, was before or after we took the two cents, or the four cents. Sorry, it's before it, because that two cents gets applied to the equalized tax rate. So that's after. So, okay, so this, so it is. The threshold is calculated based on your uh, budget minus your local revenues divided by your equalized. Or equalized group on the app. So yeah, no, I just like I said, I, I don't know where that formula came from. I wanted to know yeah. if it was before or after Sorry. the merger incentive came out. It's before. Before, because that is how your threshold is calculated. So what and you're saying is another little piece every year that's an increase to our budget, because next year there'll be only two cents mm -hmm. right. yep. for the so we'll have to make up that two cents. Yep. So the following year it all goes away. So are you saying to stay underneath the threshold, um, we, if we take this 235 and you minus this 88 out of it, that would still keep us under the threshold? Like if, we didn't, if we didn't carry over 235, we carried over um, 88 less than 235, yep. we would still be under the threshold, but it would still increase our taxes. Correct. Okay. Yes, because when you offset your local right. revenue, that impacts what you're collecting in tax. Right. Um, do you have the number of students that we uh, tuition currently, and then mm -hmm. we, che we check the Oster by Oster by Oster. Okay. So we're because the last um, the last update I have was from December, and it seemed like we were quite under with the amount that we tuition. So I don't know if we have new numbers for that for seven to twelfth grade. Yeah, it's not funding, but we do have. And we have an ongoing spreadsheet. And we found a number of things in our favor. So a right. youngster that's presently a 12th grader was listed as an 11th grader. A youngster that we shouldn't be paying tuition for, and never did pay tuition for, but was in the calculation as though we were paying tuition for. Mm -hmm. So we found a number of residents of check things. Residents of check things. So right, one elementary and two secondary, right? So I know we would want that for um, the annual report as far as, you know, um, how many of what grade are going to. So I to see if that's the No, I gave them the pre-K six. Oh, okay. Can we, it's like in six different spreadsheets right now. 
Because we've been tracking, yeah, we've been tracking that by place. So this is what we've actually budgeted for. Who is 1247? Rochester. Rochester. Rochester is currently tuition name 37. And Stockbridge is currently tuition name 31. Yeah. We added two in Stockbridge to public, and we added one in Stockbridge to private in this budget. You currently tuition one elementary student, and you we budgeted to cover one pre-K student going outside of one of your buildings. Just best practice. Okay. They can add that each show. campus. Sorry, one in each that of each campus. of those. Yeah. Yeah. Pre pre-K for pre-K. So two. And, and I noticed you. Um, since we're talking about pre-K, you increased, did I see you increased the pre-K tuition because of anticipated enrollment? Actually, part of that was an adjustment. Most okay. of that is actual. We were, we were on the light side of what we were projecting for revenue based on the number of uh, preschool students that we already have. Yep. So when will we, you know, I'm looking at these, I, again, as I said last time, I really have a hard time without knowing um, without our audit, I guess, knowing where we ended in um, from the budget that we created in 19. What, where did 19 end? Um, do you have any indication of when we might have those numbers? Yep. What did do the other the districts do? They submitted budgets without audit. They submitted budgets we had four meetings already. Without knowing what they spent in each column last year. And I'm certainly not, um, I'm certainly not defending auditors, but Tara and I had this conversation. There is a shortage of competent auditors to do school budget auditing in the state of Vermont. Yeah. Some districts are looking at going out of the state of Vermont because they had similar difficulties for a couple of years. Oh, we are. Ours, so the other, the other budgets in the district that have been approved, they don't have their audits completely? No one does. All I have is projected numbers from drafts. In the last draft, I'm working on from starting from February. Then there's no idea of when. If all of the principals get me back their fixed assets by the 10th, as, as requested, then I submit that out to the auditor, they finalize it, and then they turn the report to But they have not given so, me how long it would take to turn those reports back once the fixed assets are there. But if you have the if you, if you have the draft of the non-fixed assets portion, the expenditure portion of the audit, I only have short reports. Okay. okay. So it's it's not just waiting on fixed assets. It's waiting. No. On so what I what I work off right now are purely short reports, which doesn't give you the actual breakdown of where your pluses and minuses were. It's literally just summaries of fund balances and because okay. I had to have that to create treasury reports for town meetings. Treasury reports for town meetings, for town meetings. And I had to submit them as an unaudited treasury report. Because I don't have an actual audit that's been approved by a board yet. And as, as, as frustrating as it is, I personally want to apply Tara for, for the fact that she will not move forward yep. until she satisfies that what she's getting is solid ground. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help us to do that. Just, uh, and to thank you and, and Lindy for working through this and cutting where she cut sat. Exactly. She sat with us. Thank you, guys. She, yeah. That was a lot. She made time. Tara made time for us when there were two. two how many meetings did you have last night? Three. Three yeah. meetings last night to sit with us for hours to get this figured That's out. great. So thank you. You should just yeah. know that it's uh, my job. So um, yeah. this budget does, in this budget, uh, this with the changes, um, all of the programming is stayed as is. Is there any changes in programming? The swimming piece we had to remove. Okay. Um, I don't remember hearing about that. Uh, we put money in for it. We just saw the 300,000 people look at it. Yeah, right. So what, what is this? What was this? We program? had hoped to do a swimming program for K through two. Where? Uh, <laughs> Uh, I always get my call. BTC. BTC. That was our hope. No, it wasn't swimming lessons. It was to crown for me. It's 
swimming lessons, though, upon more research, if not just drunk, okay. swimming lessons, which is part of the reason so that I was one of the reasons. So basically, I think the best way to say it is from our initial concept to when we actually got to implementing it, the Thanks providers change. had changed. I said, yeah. yeah. And we made a decision, we opted both in terms of time for instruction and finances, monies, to fully fund our literacy program and to take another look at what's the feasibility of doing any of these types of programs. So um, I won't say you will never see it back again, but I think it's going to be a couple of years before we get to rethinking that point. Because we are continuing to focus on our youngsters being stronger in literacy and mathematics. And that means a number of different things, both for them and outside of the budget. Can you explain the, um, uh, the PE uh, teacher salaries so is 1108. Um, the change between, I well, see we had a contract of services um, plus a PE a teacher salary last year approved budget. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm guessing, Sarah, that that's both PE teachers Sorry. in our line item. Mm -hmm. I mean, ask, I'm guessing that it's both PE teachers have been moved into the teacher salary line item. Where were they before? One was in contracted instructional services and one was in teacher salary. So how does that, um, because where they expanded Stockbridge to point four instead of point two because you can't find a gym teacher for two empty. Okay. And the contracted services piece was because we, the Rochester PE teacher, is shared with another school in the district. Okay. So we hire that person as one full time position versus point four here and point six there. What do you get billed? You get billed. We get billed for point four and the other school gets billed for point four. Bill comes from their SU employee. Yes, yeah, so last year it was billed under under 320. Mm -hmm. The point four teacher in Rochester considered an SU employee in question mark. And this year that salary is actually under the Rochester salary for that person, as well as the continued salary on the TV and stuff. We had a real difficult time for the position. So does that mean that the, the, what was contracted services is now, uh, we are also paying for um, the health insurance and, and all that goes? We're going to I'm sorry, what? Yeah. You were before. It was just, 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 an, just an alum sum. Just an alum sum. Um, okay, and then, so the the um, eleven thousand dollar increase is the increase from point two to point three plus, uh, or point two to point four plus the whatever the teacher salary increase is. In the HRA. And well, the HRA is, is in a different line, right? Or is it? Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the poll. You no, know, the HRA is in the other line. Now, would the HRA need to be in this PE line, this PE box? Yes, because the state. So uh, where is it? The state negotiated health plan. So is that just under health insurance? Um, actually, they are not even. Neither one. Of them neither one of them enrolled. So one impact. They don't. But they don't with they the don't state take. health plan, you can prorate premium if they are not a one point zero employee. You cannot prorate the HRA contribution. You have to give them the full amount you can't prorate that. So, but in this case, sorry, neither one of them, one is an opt-out and one is not eligible. So HRA doesn't impact that. At the last meeting, Lindy talked about the PE teacher and possibly incorporating her into the farm school program. We honestly have not even looked anymore at that. We just tried to do So her time is here, so right, it's just for the PE. Yeah. That's and you wouldn't, you, you wouldn't put that. It's under it would, You would not put that in your 100 general fund. If you're working for food service, you need to be voted for food service as a and prior to fund from 100 to 100. So it wouldn't even come up okay. here. Does food service is SU? No, food service is its own enterprise fund. Uh, yeah, that's right. Okay. It cannot be commingled with your general fund. You can make a transfer from your general fund to help offset the expenditures in your food service program, that subsidy that you give the food service every year. So if you were to incorporate that, you could increase your subsidy that you're giving to the food service program, but you don't only look the funds. The so, USDA would come down on that part. Is it, is it in this budget at all? 
No. So it's have, not in the SU budget. No. We so do where, not budget. Is it in our annual report somewhere? You, if you choose to put your food service budget in your annual report, we can create a food service budget with your food service staff, but it is not a budget that you will know. There's just this transfer to food service. Uh, yeah. So where is it held? Uh, in fund 600. It's for enterprise. Oh, but I'm where it's held here in your district. It's just a separate fund. Like the building reserve fund is a separate fund. Food service is its own entity on its own. Because it, it take, has revenue that comes in that's undetermined. Um, if we go back to the first page and you could just make some comments on some of the large changes, um, like uh, $250 for the benefit, $20,000. Sorry, where are you? Uh, first page, oh, 1100 um, regular ed. Yeah, I'm just looking at some of the, the big changes of $250 for the benefit. Maybe just let me say this before we start. We can we can attempt to answer some of those, but some of these changes, whether they go large or small, is because there were incorrect numbers that we're comparing from. Okay. That's part of the dilemma. Right. Like that one back to me. Well, because okay. then, like my other great one is the books and periodicals, we open almost $10,000 to $37,000. To fully spend, that's to fully fund our literacy initiative. That's literacy initiative. That's okay. literacy. That's a line item, 640. 40. Under one one zero zero. Which also we we get we are getting money from the SU for that as well, though, right? No. Mm -hmm. Yes. For, for literacy. Yeah, because we have some paid grants. Yeah. Grants. Right. So from cover Medicare money or something, right? The, that was that was the first Medicaid. Medicaid. Sorry. That was the first round, but this is planned. And so there was an initial investment made through, with this money from, from Yeah, that's the Fortis Canal. So those books have been purchased. Not right all now. of them. Not all of them. So this is buying but it needs more in order to complete the step to fifth grade. Or fifth grade. So this money is going toward Building out the Fontes of Penel, is this the top of Fontes of Penel, or is that a recurring building we pick up to buy new materials? No, we basically, in order to, we, we bought some third grade. And uh, if, if they want more. Two third grade, sorry. Yeah, okay. two third grade. And then if they want to work in fifth, they're going to come up with it somewhere. Um, the school. Mm -hmm. We had some Greek money, rural education program money that they use or proposing to use. I don't know what your staff got ordered today. Just got free up. <laughs> okay, so that's going to get them a little closer to have all of that. And then there's a bunch of things. And there's classroom libraries that need to be added. If you look at these, so it includes a couple of things, the Pontius and Carol, that, that are needed to make up for the upper grades. It also includes direct instruction materials for students that qualify under that. Yeah, just speaking of our annual report. I have sure. it all. I'm just saying, but I'm just saying, boy, books and periodicals is a lot. It's very boring compared to what you're telling me all this money is going for. And then we need to make it very clear that this is a big, you know, because that's going to be a number they're going to look at, just like you saw it. And yeah. then we're able to explain, mm -hmm. okay. Get ready. This is what this is about. This is a continuation of Fontes and Pinnell. This is buying new materials. Right. We haven't fully funded. It's a big part of our literacy. That's why it's 20, 30, Right, exactly. Yeah, almost, we, almost so 000. to clarify, we have those notes. We can help you develop that for what you want to be in the report. Well, I think some of this, because I'm also right. realizing in the report that there's there are some that just have to be verbal and just not getting right, right. the information. We can I think that's, that's one of those ones that people want the kids to read. And right. They have more literacy materials than they've ever had. No, I understand. They're all off the date. I mean, I would love this kind of spending or that kind of budget increase. That's what we want to see. But just that it's, it's, it's not got no lights on it. You right. I mean? And big nice. numbers, big number changes. It's a big number change with no lights on it, and books and periodicals is pretty boring. Yeah. Like, you can't read. And does it have to be books and periodicals? Is yeah. that yes. That's how it's also, the, the classroom libraries, we put a lot of money into those. Yeah. Yeah. 
It's got a lot of new material, so it's it's uh, okay. Extension. Of so we are approaching having all the components for the grade levels. We're not quite there yet. In terms of the board's long-term vision, what you would hope to do then is to get in some sort of a replacement cycle, so that you don't let everything get all run down again and have to have another investment in this amount. So every couple of years, you would be looking to run different components of your material. Folks get torn, get and things like that. Can that be at the SU level? I mean, make a big expenditure initially, can it, can it be something that's driven down down the schools? Well, I've been, I spent all day having people complain about what the SU does. No, I don't. <laughs> so, well, I'm just saying if, if, if the literacy program came from the SU in the first place. No, you're right. I, you're right. I understand. We, should, we want to control it. Um, they, they provide funding. Tara? Um, so in the, uh, the 111, you've got the tuition benefit, the, two, the, the 250 that Amy identified, that's the 20,050, and I can see that we picked that up because we're no longer funding things under 2213 staff training, because that went down 100%. Um, my question, though, is I see regular ed instruction and I see a tuition benefit for our regular teachers, but I don't see that, that same uh, line item for art or for PE or music. Um, or guidance, is that just because we're, we loved all the professional development under general teachers, or there's, okay. So not everybody uses their professional development Right, well, I understood that's why when we pull it all together into one account code 2213, it was easy to say staff training, and then it's all there. But, you know, since we break, we break regular ed and, and, and specialized ed out in different categories, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it didn't seem logical to not break it out. Function code for the new part of the account, which is what we were slowly trying to do at the same time, where we could make those clear distinctions for what I need to switch to for July 1. That's what the staff training under 2213 was more of what you're doing in-house. And when your teachers are accessing their own professional development, that is a benefit. So it needs to be folded under 200 object code because that's the benefit object code. Okay. So that's some of the further rationale behind some of these movements, just trying to put things in the right place. Right, but just, just like I said, understanding why there's a, a tuition benefit for principals and a tuition benefit for general staff, and that it's not. You know, that, that same 250 uh, uh, item code isn't carried forward in the individual instruction categories. But, but that's professional yeah. development. It's right. not just our track. Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. And once we get everything in the right place, this document becomes a picture of what you believe in for your school. You can zoom right in on those lines and say, we value this, 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 and this, yep. based on what we're seeing in the numbers. <laughs> we're not there yet, but we're a whole lot better than we were. And then you charge the new charge of accounts is going to absolutely help. So it has to be done in a much better process than it was last time. Um, I have a question on, or comment on, on page 5, which is 2310, um, Board of Education. Uh, we had talked before that um, we have a, a clerical salary of $1,000, and I think that might have been missed. Uh, labeled or lumped together because we, we do not have a treasurer's salary. It's not salary, it's really. It says salary, but it's enough. But we have. We have 2313. We have a board treasurer. Sorry, because we're a Oh, did you have. Oh, okay. I didn't know that there was another. another um, Wait, just tell me what you said again, Charles. Next page, 2313. Board treasurer. Has, has the own function, but we do not have any any money that we're allocating to the treasurer. But we do have thousand dollars that we're allocating to on the clerical mm -hmm. salary. There's no salary allocated yeah. to the treasurer. Uh, there is a thousand dollars under your board of education for a clerical salary, which would be if you are hiring an ex. Outside of the board, no figure. Yeah. Or you don't do that. Yeah, you do that. Right. It's like a
about it that we realized that the job of the treasurer was it's quite important, yeah. um, right. and that we felt that they, but we couldn't do anything in the previous budget because there was right. there was no line item for them. So I guess I would recommend that we we don't add any money to the budget, but we would possibly take this clerical salary and be, and either split it in half or, or, or maybe That's, even. In, well, we're giving the board treasurer. Six hundred and fifty dollars. No, that's no. not. That's what Tara just explained. It's okay. That is other fees. Oh, that's the both fees in the. Oh, okay. These are the yeah, eyes. I saw board treasurer is. So I guess it's also remember. I couldn't add eight thousand dollars at the town meeting. Your voters so. have to agree to pay your treasurer a stipend that has to go on your warning. So if you want to move that thousand dollars from the board to a treasurer's salary, you do also have to warn that. Just like you have to warn every single year now your board staff, your board stipend, all has to be article on your warning. So that will also need to be an article on your warning to set the stipend or set the annual stipend, annual salary for your board stipend. They sacrifice my own. It has to be probably all the board has to get paid, right? You can choose to donate your no, no, no. I, I remember the conversation right. and appreciating the complexity of what she did without remembering the specifics. Right, and felt like she should have some conversation. She should have some conversation. Right. Um, in this case, she, uh, so, is this a problem to move it over? <laughs> No. And are we taking it from the clerical? Uh, yeah. We don't have a clerical person. Yeah, it says clerical. Well, we're budgeted so we can take yeah. it from there. It's budgeted, but we've never used it. I mean, right. I mean maybe we want to leave $200 or 250 in there and move sure. 750 right. over or something. Good. Um, I think that sounds excellent. So how much do you want to move? So how much? You want to see how much? If the board feels that that's acceptable, I would suggest Maybe. moving okay. moving um, yeah. 750 over to the um, uh, board treasurer, so we leave 250 in the um, clerical salary for in in the case that maybe somebody. Wants we do to need to, we do need to get someone to take minutes or yeah. or to do some sort of clerical work assembling booklets or, or whatever. I mean, a lot of people are willing to volunteer and it's wonderful help for you don't need to use it, but. So you're taking it from 2310 real estate? Yes, okay. uh, 750 of it. Again, so we're not adding anything or subtracting anything. Okay. Also on page six under Office of the Principal 2410, the clerical salary has come down. Has the, just because their salaries went down, or is there how we reconfigured after we can bring new to the SDM? So basically, there was a reduction in the amount we thought we could still operate. And similar to that, health insurance that we could get And that actually reconfiguration is uh, something that we did, we, was, we were doing this year as well, or part of this year, right? It's co what we're currently doing, so this is right. a reduction. This is not something new, this is still status quo. Right, it's what we put into place after we knew it was moving. Well, that's what I'm saying. And when was that? Like, that was it in June. Oh, what? When was the last day, right? Okay, well, we already had our budget. We already had our budget, so it doesn't matter. So that's why. So I guess I'm just as far as talking points going, you know, as this question, as a question for this, that we are not changing anybody's positions. It is how how it is currently staffed. Oh, seriously. <laughs> yeah. The big thing we have to remember is that we do. I looked at our. I, I, I looked at the, the 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 stuff about warning, and the the things we figured out before were if if a if a if a, a physician's salary changes, that has to be warned. So we will have to have a warning to uh, to, 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 to compensate the, the treasurer seven hundred and fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that's a warned item. Well, on Warn our item separate meeting. on the okay. Correct. A separate article. And, is that and if you are budgeting yeah. you do have to increase the budget one hundred and ninety one dollars and twenty five cents to accommodate for the site. Okay. But let's reduce it down a little bit. No, hold on. Okay. Six fifty. I forgot to get over my part. 
formula there. Well, $19.13. $19? I think we probably We can find the $19. Yeah. Yeah. Put it back. I want to hide it. Thank you for pointing that out. Very, very good. Mm -hmm. All right, so now as far as the annual report getting these final numbers, if we're by, if we're if we're going back and we're when Tara's uh, finalizing audits, we're hopefully getting some numbers when and this kind of thing, we can segue into the next thing about the annual report. When do when would do you guys we need that schedule that you have the schedule? Sale that are still sitting in your general fund 
into a special education. Right, just like we would allocate, just like we would allocate the other piece yeah. of, a, of yeah. the surplus. So yeah, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm just surprised that that, 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 that got, got dropped. So is that money in this? It was, it, yes, it's part of that. So, so part of that is, is right. the because reserve fund. The other thing we need to, 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 to if, if, if this chart is correct, and we have to, we have to have the warning published on the 5th, we can't, we can't approve a budget on the 7th or the 8th, whatever, no, the, whatever the, the, the day is, because like our regular the meeting is the 7th. If you write the warning the night of your meeting after you approve the budget, and then you go and file it with your board clerk, yeah. Yeah. No, I'm. I'm just. Uh, as as we're, we're looking at when we're going to pass a pass a budget, um, you know, and how much time we're going to give the auditors, and how much you know. But that that then puts us that much more up against the wall. You know, we say, gee, let's wait till the eleventh hour to give the auditors their opportunity to do things. You know, that means we're quite likely. And I'll go check with the auditors tomorrow. Now that I can actually focus on something other than um, and see where they're at as far as getting that detail, knowing that the final audit will be released until it's Because that's the piece that we, we, we need to to, to, to run budget. Without fixed assets, we're not going to all of our budget. But it also means that again, the board is going to have to have. We're going to have to have a different meeting to approve the budget because we cannot put it off to our next regular meeting. And I don't feel, at least my personal opinion is, that we do not have uh, an appropriate amount of information to pass a budget tonight. Uh, that, that's how I feel. I mean, I think the budget does, I think you guys have done a really good job on it. Um, I don't feel that so there's I, well, any changes that need to happen, but the concern is that. Yeah. We're also just seeing it for the first time tonight. We didn't Pretty fine. Need more time to take credit, really? <laughs> right, right. But I just think it's, it's. I think it's important that we 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 think about you know the end game of when we need to have you know right. uh, the numbers together. So and so, what do we say? When, um, I would tend towards um, the uh, uh, end of March. As close as we can get, because I, I really think, you know, we'd, it'd, it'd be so much better to have an idea of what these balances are, to have an idea of whether we, we have an actual reserve fund for the, for those monies or not, um, and to, you know, have a better. Do we want a list of the of of, of, of the kids, or were we happy with the explanation? I, I don't remember what the board's pleasure was. Well, I thought that for, um, I think just for the. Well, part we had traditionally right, been right. asked by the, the folks to, to put um, that you know, a which, kind of a grid of what, you know, how many kiddos go into which school and which grade. That. Yeah. Right, but I want to make sure that that's all we care about for the we, we don't have any more questions about that for I students for the no. numbers. Not for students for the Okay, so then so then really what we're looking yeah, at is getting some clear some clarification from the auditors. Um, so um, I don't know what people's end of end of March looks like. So I'm gonna. I don't know about the timeline, but if all of a sudden we have to cut a hundred thousand dollars from the budget on the spot right. at the end of March, that's a big ask. That's people. That's people. Oh, yeah. That's right. But so to push it all the way to a week before you send out your warning. I mean, I don't know what the auditor's timeline is to well, in getting it back. But like, I'm just, I feel like that, I don't feel comfortable with that in March. I feel like that's way too tight if all of a sudden we have to cut on another $150,000. Well, can Tara just inform us as soon as the auditors provide the information and you know, meet with them, you know, to warn it and meet them the next couple of days? Yeah, because the other thing is, if there's nothing sub, so let's say that number comes back and it's fine, and basically the budget's good. There's nothing substantive that requires all six of you to be there, four of you to be there in the next budget. Um, you can turn a meeting around pretty short amount of time. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm getting at. It doesn't have to be at 6.30 at night either. It could be at 4.30 in the afternoon. Absolutely. 
I just want us to balance um, giving you know giving the auditors and, and everyone time to get the information with exactly what right. Lindy is saying. Yeah, the whole like I don't want to be March 31st going okay flip a coin who we can. Well, how are you going to speak to the auditors tomorrow? Am I correct? Emailing them right now. Oh, okay. Then. okay. <laughs> So we'll have a better idea. Uh, can you can you push them to, to try to get us those the, the, those numbers by by uh, uh, middle of the month, early you know next oh, week if we can. Thank you. Monday. Sarah, could you um, would, just before we move on, could you um, would you recommend that we put on two hundred thirty-five thousand of the prior year surplus? But what was the actual amount of our surplus? <laughs> <laughs> projected as of that report. Projected as of written. That exact number I don't of your exactly. unassigned fund balance is $259,542. So yeah, 542. We just so Amy, just like, in terms of the tuition students, you're just looking like for a grid. So you're looking like yeah, I can show number you. Kids I had the same number of kids money, number of kids middle grade. Yeah, do you, do you think? Do you think this is what um, that they wear some more price cost on it? That's what we've done. That's what we've done. Yeah, this is what we've done before. So I don't okay. know if you want to. I, I want that same format. Yeah. 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 Okay. Got do it. we need it broken out between Rogers? So, so in my note no. from our meeting. The town ended up asking us that question. Oh, okay. Like, and all of a sudden it was right. A little bit of a scramble on the spot. It wasn't hard, but I know what you have to be careful was with, with um, not giving out too much information. But what is it? The so last year, the, the, the question would be: Is it FERPA? You know, if, if we're identifying one one eighth grader uh, in, 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 in Rochester is going to, to to Middlebury, I think is that a FERPA violation? Thirty-seven of those students are Rochester residents. And that would probably be good. And just, I think that would be a very appropriate way to do it. Here's the total amount of our students in each grade, and. And this, these many of them are Rochester kids, and these many of them are Stockbridge okay. kids. That works, I think. Do you think people it's not actually want to know, though, like they're, <laughs> even though this grid, not in the grid that tells which school they're going to, but more of in Stockbridge, there are eight, there are so many eighth graders in Rochester, so many eighth graders. Not saying, I, I didn't see my list. I'm interested more in how many youngsters are we tuitioning and what's the past yeah. tuition? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Great. I don't, I can't think. They care about yeah, they 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 how many are going to come in your I just need to do the exact question. I mean, what I hear from the other district who pushes the majority of their kids is I put, you know, that there are four kids attending Catholic Academy, five kids attending Karen Academy. And I think that's what And what the yeah. amount to which the rate is, is, or, you know, what their set to which the rate is for private schools, or if they just get to stay average. So that's what I did for another district. The just so the board knows that we have that, we have a great deal of confidence in that number. We actually have a list with kids' names right. and grades. And we just advance it a year, move people in and out as they move. Great. Um, right. Well, I, I, at least I know from the, the Stockbridge point of view, they've been in the past. They'd like you know seeing where the, the distribution of the kids the kids are in terms of grade because it tells you, okay, we're going to be you know we're getting rid of a big clump of seniors or we've got a, 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 a whole bunch of, of middle school kids coming in. Right. Projection. Like, you know, for a while there's a lot going to Sharon, and now there's not as many going to Sharon, but more going to. Right. Right. I just think we can't identify probably by grade by by town. I think we could, so I, the, but I do think it's valuable to say. There's 38 Stockbridge uh, seven through 12ers and 36 or, or what? 31 Stockbridge and 37 Rochester, whatever those numbers are. With our tiny numbers, if you get right. right in a couple of criteria, you're going to be able to pop an individually up to right. right. I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, and that's that's against the law. Are um, you moving on to the annual report discussion? I'm sorry, are you talking about um, I think we were just we, what we were trying to clarify was was when we needed to get an annual report done and where we were going to be in terms of a meeting. Okay. Um, I think we're done. Do we have any more questions for for Tara? An open date on the twenty sixth. Yeah. Um, on your annual reports, so those have to be mailed ten days prior to the meeting. That's my friendly right. reminder. Mm -hmm. I have had a very bad experience with annual reports already this year, so. As soon as we can start working on them, we'll be ideal. 
I was trying to get together with you, if you remember two weeks ago, uh, trying to get together with my committee for the last three weeks. And Just it's, even it's, it's not, not, not on Oh, no, no, no. I would love to sit down with you as soon as we're available. Yeah, so statutorily and required to do the budget, the board report, the principal's report, and the superintendent's report, and the treasurer's report. That's that bare minimum that mm -hmm. needs to go in the book. Yeah. And do you have three treasurer's reports? I have three. You know. <laughs> Where's that real quick? I have to do a direct door box mailing. <laughs> All the hands on deck for three days for every district that went to budget already. But our treasurer could do it. Yeah. Too. No, apparently they don't do it because they're not tracking the same detail, detail that okay. is required to the report, like your special is this new revenue from the state? Or? fund balances. No, because when I reached out to all the treasurers saying we have your treasurer's report, they all responded and said, We don't do that. What do you mean you don't do that? Well, I guess that's a training then this for this year, right? Okay. So I can talk to some other business managers and they do also provide a treasurer's report on behalf of the treasurer. Okay, so it is, it's, 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 not, it's, not a, it's not an unusual practice. Apparently not. Okay. I just saw treasurer's report from the treasurer of the treasurer's report. Mm -hmm. I never remember. Maybe we should work a deal on the principal's report. Maybe we can follow us for hey, you know, we should say we don't do that. Yeah. <laughs> She can do that in between being the food service uh, coordinator and uh, driving the buses. Um, so uh, I think, are we good? Does anyone else have any other questions for, for Tara on the budget? No, thank you, Tara. Thank you very, very much. Um, and we started we started segueing by talking about what we need the budget for the annual report, so we might as well finish the annual report update. Um, it's, it's, yeah, as I say, it's unfortunate. Um, I really hope to have a mock-up by this meeting and uh, between meetings just not happening and, um, and to some extent my time on the selection committee was due with me. Uh, but uh, so I'm a little worried right now just because certainly getting the basics in. Um, uh, well, we do have a template starting and we started getting... But there's some things that we just have to do because, because definitely putting reports in from Excel as opposed to putting them into PDFs it's a much better looking report even just that. Um, we don't have much information. I need to sit down with Tara and just go through and just type in basic information on, on, on what things are so that I can start to put together um, uh, descriptions of each section so we, we can say this is what this section is, this is what this section is. So yeah, we do have a, a template. It's, but it's very rough still. Um, so I, I just, you yeah. know, we need to step it up. Um, yeah. Can we? Yeah, we have some of those questions to us, and we can answer some of those sections too. Sure. So it's, it's, I was kept hoping to be together with my two, com two compatriots so that we could figure out what questions need to be asked, because I know I can't do it by myself this thing, as much as I can. And, and Jenny has stepped up with some uh, uh, great stuff, um, some really great, as I say, some of the bar charts and graphs are really interesting um, and useful. Um, but I think, yeah, now it's sort of crunch time, we just got It may not be the panacea that I have in mind. It will still be great. It'll have more information than it did last year. Um, I want to say, maybe I'm not sure if I already had, but the, um, in the past for um, Stockbridge mailing, we did need to get um, labels from the Stockbridge town clerk because there is a number of residents that are um, uh, get their mail in Bethel or in other, other places. So we were able to it's print, field. right? In, uh, when you when I did it for Bethel, then they their town budget, their reports for the school district didn't make the county report, so I didn't do a special mail for them. I was able to get the Excel file from the town clerks that they used for their annual reports for the town, and the mail center actually <coughs> did all of that and sent it all out in the bulk mail department that they used. So I don't, I, know know use, I don't know who you used last year for a printer, but I used, that's why I used the Spalding. So and I just provided them with the Excel files from the two Spalding, Spalding let you use their bulk mail and so that would 
we should look into that, talk to Spalding, because that, that is, is phenomenal. Oh, okay. that, that, was a, that was an additional cost that we don't use that both mailing permit for anything else. She was a huge, it's like two hundred and thirty dollars. So I'm sorry, just give me my instruction again. I'm talking to Penny. 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 Yeah. Penny about the problem. about the labeling of the yeah, mail. So all I had to do is I reached out to the mail 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 mail. and they sent me their cell file, which had everybody's addresses on it, and I provided that to Spalding. They provided it to the mail distribution center that they sorry, used. Where did you get the Excel file from? From the town clerk. Because oh. they have the Excel file for all of the residents that they mail the town reports to, and that's who you're also responsible to mail it to, or your voters on your voter registry. So you would get it from your Rochester town clerk and your Stockbridge town clerk, and then you would submit that into Penny with your draft. I think. Okay. And she made she so they they they, they print the address on individually or whatever on, on every the mailing center took care of all of that. Well, and then we just get built back. I do and question go back. about the Rochester though because I mean I don't know about your household but I know it was uh, two labels on my town report uh, that come to the same household two different names and I think a lot of people have that. And if we do it for Rochester, there could be a lot of duplicate. Yeah, because you have you're legally required to send it to every registered voter. Right. So you have multiple registered voters in your household, you're going to get multiple. But uh, we were able to do it with um, mailing it to everybody who has a Rochester resident last year. Yeah, so you, did, you did the, the box, box holders, the mail box holders. Yeah, right. resident, resident, or current occupant. Yeah. Is that acceptable to do? So you can do. You're going to have a lot more if you do it to that capacity because not everybody is a registered voter that may have a residential address because that would go to all physical deliveries and also PO box holders. And that will look at just the numbers between those two things, which. So wait, tell me again. So that you would get from the. Get the uh, difference between registered voters and town residents. Yeah. Box holders, resident, Rochester box holders, doctor's box holders. And we only need the voters. And Dory from Pittsfield helped me with all of that. She was phenomenal. <laughs> we can talk. I just wanted to put it. We can talk. I just wanted to put it. Trial by fire in the last two weeks. That you know, if I can help you make your process any easier, I would love to be able to share that knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, the one thing that yeah. at least has never happened in my experience in, in Stockbridge, and I've been you know, a voter as long as I've been here, and so's my wife, we've only ever gotten one copy. So saying, we, you stop me if that's it We've only gotten one copy. Right? Right? Yeah. Um, we have the same well, last name. Right. right, but she was just saying that it's fairly, by law, it's supposed to go to every yeah, registered vote. Yeah, that's what the we got, two ta we got two school reports yeah. and, one, and one town report. Yeah. Uh, it sounds similar to a competition yeah. that was had in my house. Right. <laughs> Not for discussion tonight, just to bring up and put on someone's notes. We should have a conversation about when we do electronic yeah. reports. The mail people tell us people stand in the post office and throw them in yeah. the trash almost constantly. Mm -hmm. So to send it out in an electronic format and then to ask if you'd like one mail, which we'll postcard to fill out and send back. Many districts are headed in that direction. Yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Yeah. Not yeah. obviously for this year. Yeah. And you should. I mean, when you have your official yeah. report done, it should be posted on your website. Yeah, that's that's, that's good practice. I don't think it's done that. But. Oh, yeah. So you've got my that the report. All right. right. That's what I was looking for to, to show the to figure out the names on the back part. Uh, so do we think it's an amazing job yeah. this design is? Yeah. Do we think that um, when we have this special meeting on either Thursday the 19th, which seems to have nothing, and Thursday the 26th, which seems to have nothing, as you wise at this point, one of those two maybe or somewhere where we figure out after we hear back from Spalding, do you think we could have maybe a, 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 a roughed out template to be looking at that night as well? Yes. Perfect. Um, all right. Uh, direct instruction update. Oh, I mean, we were going to talk about the annual meeting. Oh, that's a good point. I'm sorry. Right. So I just wanted to say that I have to vote I have to vote with Dan McKinley, and he is willing to moderate. Okay. Um, and Dan McKinley, he um, just did our, our Rochester town. He's willing to do it. Um, and uh, I, actually, Tara, 
and LA was Christy and Andrew. Um, we need to confirm the time and the location. Um, I know it's going to be in Rochester. I assume it's going to be in the auditorium. Um, mm -hmm. Is that correct? And it has been, what, at 7 o'clock? That was, is that what we're doing? Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. I did it Right, and that, that I mean, we'll, we, we'll, we'll actually, yeah. we actually confirm that when we uh, approve the warning, because that's all part of the warning. Correct. Christy was saying that she needed it. She was, okay. she was saying she needed it ahead of time to put it on schedules and stuff. Yep. So. I forgot to thank you about child care. That would be the child care component. That would be great. Um, and then I do have another, a number of just small little things that as we get closer we need to, to, to think about and, and who's, um, you know, about the mics and about lighting and, mm -hmm. and, and stuff. I wrote the podium on I mean, the house. The house lights that they used last night are much, much better, so you don't have to worry so much about that. Um, the stage, obviously, yeah, checking drawer who was here. Right. The person on the street was sent for that. I have a poor light this one. Right. Yeah, it'd be good to have some kid runners. I don't know if Katie would be interested in Cali or something like that. It'd be good to have some kid runners yeah. with the mics and the handles. Because it was hard last night. Right. Well, the mics were functional. I don't know whether right. they're, not, they're not working right now. Well, so clearly we have to check them before the day of the meeting. Right. That's one of those things. And just some little things um, um, like that. They're, I think, I mean, you know, the other big thing with the a budget, but I think we have to come up with a presentation about buildings. We have to, I think we have to talk about it. We have to mention it. So people are certainly going to ask us about it. Right. I mean, I'd be amazed if they didn't. So I think we have to have something prepared to talk about. Maybe we should put that on our agenda for next meeting is to, to discuss what will be this. I mean, hopefully, do you yeah. think the building committee could have their final report by that? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll have a meeting and we'll see where we're at. I said yes. Um, <laughs> and also, um, I was at our town meeting last night and it was pretty nice. We walked in and there was stuff in the lobby. And I think it would be nice if we could, you know, have some kids or anything, artwork or, you know, just, yeah. from both schools. Yeah, from both schools. I mean, just stuff that's like in our hallway that, you know, maybe we see, but the, the general public does not. Just a thought. It's a great town report, too. Yeah. Really yeah. well done. Good job. Okay, well, that's all I really have. You have to make a I'd just like to say real quick that when you do the report, you use RSUD instead of the Rochester auditorium. Because in the last night's meeting, it was warned that the Rochester School Auditorium. And that's just not what it is. It is not. Um, okay, anything else on the annual report of the annual meeting? Yeah. Direct instruction yeah. update. Uh, and I, it's the end, and so you all are not going to let me talk as much as I would want to. <laughs> but they only give you five minutes. I know. For me, five minutes for anything is difficult. Nine um, o'clock. <laughs> it's going really, really well. Um, the kids have been tested who the teachers recommended into direct instruction. Um, I've been able to coach three teachers and do um, a model lesson for the rest of the teachers. Um, I'm in the restorative classrooms, and um, I know that Deb told me um, for the first time this one little boy in the, in the middle school, did you hear? He read three paragraphs, and up to this point, he hid under a desk. He just didn't want to read. Well, that's um, great. So, and the teachers, as, as Bonnie saw, the teachers, are they're desperate. They want to do the right thing for these kids, and they are thrilled, really, with with having it, and the, I, I have to give them credit because the coaching, I mean, you guys know who I am, the coaching is very direct. I would take the book out of their hands, and I show them a different way to do things, and then give it back. They get a report at the end of each coaching visit as to what they did well. We call them the glows, and then what they have to grow on, which are very specific. And yet they want me to come back. <laughs> so, um, and the kids are just fabulous. I mean, they're, they're, I love kids who have behavior problems because. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder we get along. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
um, and they, they're, you, you just see that it's, I'm so pleased with the teachers, I'm pleased um, with everything that's happening. Deb and Bruce have been so supportive. Um, we, we might be doing a summer program um, where we are going to test the kids in the restorative classroom or into what direct instruction level they belong. And then um, the restorative classroom kids will have direct instruction this summer. They will be in groups and they will be, they will be learning. So, and it's thrilling, guys, because I mean, like we have two fifth graders who are in the non-reader program. We have eighth graders who are in the first grade program. And you see that they see this is different. And the coaching, because I'm, I'm interactive like this, and we explain what a coach is, you know, who you think a coach is, and the sports and everything, and that's who I am. And they, they know now that, that it's never their fault, it's always the instruction. So I'm, um, <laughs> it's really, I mean, I have a kid who I too who says, how did you mess up? What did you do wrong? <laughs> think about it. But they, they love to see me coaching the teacher because they said, the two, the two eighth graders said, so the teachers are learning. I really like the teachers have to learn, he said. So it's really, and I commend the teachers. I commend the teachers because this is all going on, guys, while the kids are right there. I mean, I'm taking the book out of the teacher's hand while the kids are right there. And it becomes both a behavioral and academic thing, and it's the only two towns that I don't go into are Sharon and Stratford. Otherwise, I'm in all the other, all the other classrooms, all the other schools. Okay. And Rochester and Stockbridge just got their materials. For students outside of special ed. Yeah. Yeah, students outside of special ed, and they will be getting them. Beautiful. Bruce, do you want to say anything? <laughs> no, I'm, I haven't been able to sit in. I, I sat in on some of the original work that you did, but I, I'm
everyone else had COVID out and none of the gates were, you know, had a nice jacket. Who cares about it? I think I've watched the 26 left. Thursday's better for me than any other day. So, what are we? And if um, our if that ends up being when our budget meeting needs to be, then we'll just squeeze that into the retreat, right? That's so true. It can just warm, it would have to be warmed anyway. Yeah. So let's let's let's, let's, let's uh, do the twenty six for the retreat then. What's the agenda of the retreat? I feel like we've worked so hard to schedule that I need a refresher. Well, well we're retreating on. Well, that way you guys discussed tonight, um, green initiatives is one of the... I also think we need to talk okay. in depth about the future of the budget. What are we going to do? You know, what Sarah's telling us. I mean, we can put it off until next year, but we're going to face next year. But it would seem like it's time to start talking about... Well, and also talking... Keep affording what we're doing right now, where the prices are going up. And maybe talking about what type of feedback we need from the community as we go forward with that to really understand what kind of actual, what questions we really have for the community to put forward. I mean, I think it's almost because of all these building issues, these numbers, you know, showing the numbers are going to keep going up, keep going up. You know, this is the reality. Mm -hmm. And how do we solve it? Yeah, well, I mean, operational costs, um, you know, affect what 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 our, our spending and taxing capacity is for any kind of external capital projects. Well, so you know, so I think we, we need to talk about this. I think mm -hmm. I I love this spend so much. We did our last year, not really that much for me. Without the reputation, it's supposed to be a priority for us when we work here. Mm -hmm. This is something we were selling to people. We really have it. You know, literacy became the thing as opposed to outdoor it. education, foreign language. Those were two of our big. Uh, those were two of our big curricular pushes, and they've been kicked to the curb. Yep, yeah, exactly. And I think we need to figure out how we can make them back because outdoor education doesn't have to cost us much at all. And I think it's a, it is a selling point. So those are the three that I think. Right. We talked about it the last uh, at the last retreat. One of the things we didn't get to was the just the the, the marketing of, of 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 our district. How we're letting people know what we're doing and and, and how we're being successful and what, you know what our initiatives are, making the you know uh, making the, the the neighboring tuition and communities more aware of, of 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 what we're offering kids. So I mean, those the that was the one thing that. That, we, that I remember from our conversation that we didn't get to. And maybe we'll have a, a final business development report that we could actually spend a bunch of time talking about that in the tree. So I think we have to say. I feel like we spent so long time just kind of trying to remember why it yeah. was on there. Do you, do you want to have it at my house again? Who's the, it, it's big enough, it's easy to get to? Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. Okay. It's a nice place. Huge Lindy Close. Uh, right. Uh, that or that, if you want this. But that's not as cozy. And yes, you know. <laughs> we are, but you also said, did, did we misunderstand you? Thursday is a day that, <laughs> is, is, is that, that, that you... We don't want to jinx it, but it should be okay. As long as right. Okay. I'm going to be doing the same thing. I was like Monday, Friday, Monday, Friday, Monday, Friday, Monday, Friday. 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 Monday, and we'll try to put some time timekeeping. Um, we're done. Mine's up. Mine's up. Okay. Um, All right. So we're, we're the 26, 9 to 2 is being scheduled as a board retreat, board retreat at Janie's.
Is that is everyone yes. understanding that and agreeing with that and we're on board? Yes. Uh, Okay. All right. Uh, public comment. Yes. <coughs> Man. I just need a clarification because it wasn't really made clear to me. We jumped from our presentation into the building whether or not this particular board uh, does give the blessing of the, the group, the envision group that is working on the school to proceed with our uh, explorations on the future of the building and a totally they're so connected. I think Joanne said we are invited to attend the building. Anyone can go to the building yeah. Yeah. and, and um, you know, what you know, what way would you envision us working with you that would further your work here and also with no duplication, you know what I'm saying? You have to make a decision about the building, but we're also exploring, you know alternate ownership to the building that's not going to be the public school building. And mm -hmm. in that process, some of the, uh, in your report, you have, you will have facts gleaned from the engineer report, but in terms of recommendations going forward, I think there could be uh, potential for some great collaboration, even at this level, um, that could help you go forward as well. But I just didn't hear that, yes, we got the blessing, Yes, we do want to work with you. And that's what I need to clarify. Okay. Um, I think I can, can successfully say uh, uh, for the board that we, you know, that, that um, you can have, you know, uh, you can have uh, in, in Envision Vermont and, and, and have that. And we, as part of our charge and our mission, as we, as we move forward, we're going to be soliciting community impact. So, of course, we want to hear what, what your group has to say or her group has to say, anyone's group has to say. Um, well, you know, it's, it's, I, wanna, I mean, you would also be invited to, you know, yeah, be in yeah, the same. Yeah. We don't have to duplicate efforts here. It already has been duplicated. But I mean, if for efficiency's sake, for conversation's sake, I think that once a group is established to work towards a solution, we're as open to have you there. And so um, I do think that, you know, collaboration is very important. So, are you getting your yes. blessing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do I have your blessing for my group? You can have, sure, absolutely. Thank you very much. Got my blessing. Um, you know, and anyone that, I mean, we, we support, I think it's important to say, that, to, to say this uh, again and very clearly, the, the, the board supports any community group that's interested in, in uh, uh, you know, Working with us uh, and, uh, and, and furthering the education of, of, of the children of our of our towns, you know. So so yeah, absolutely. Bring it on. So Rochester has a copy of that engineering report. Yes. Yes. And there's a there's, so there's copies available. There's copies of the town hall. Right. Town, we're looking at town, that. Town, we town offices. Yeah. Crossing is a facilitator of our group, so we want to just kind of start moving with that. Take it over to that. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's 60 paging, pages of very exciting reading. Enjoy. Well, we have another report from them, like a building report from your group, too. Well, I'm just saying that we'll be looking for that report, but uh, he's an architect and he's just reading his engineering reports. We have two engineers on the board. Yeah, so he wants to also look at this. We just want to start gleaning information. Um, your report, your report will be very helpful when it's when it's complete. They're looking through it, I think, through the scope of when it goes if it goes back to Rochester County or if what our town is doing. Not what's an educational <laughs> okay. building thing. Is it it's separate? It does, it's not going to be impacted. It's what you guys don't want. Yeah, yeah. yeah. everything you decide you are divorcing. Right. We're trying to look to the repurposing to that building. Okay. Rachel. Yes. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is, is there a line item amount for the Dandelion building sale? No, that was in one of the... No. That, that, was, that, that was sold budgets ago. So that wouldn't be shown, that so wouldn't be shown in, here. So in the... That's just done expenditure. That's just expenditure. So is it on this? No, oh, no. It would have been a revenue. Okay, great. Next one is, uh, I didn't hear the annual meeting date. I mean, May 5th. Uh, it's first Tuesday in, first Tuesday in uh, May. It'll be uh, at, at Rochester. May 5th, Tuesday, 7 p.m. at the, the 
Yeah. We, we believe it's going to be the, uh, the uh, RSUD uh, auditorium. Great. Okay. And but it's that, the Maya, so we shall dress up and. Uh, so the building committee meeting, uh, at our last meeting, um, I indicated that um, I wanted to be a part of that committee. And um, so I'm just waiting to hear from the date. And the last Correct. meeting said that there would be a date set tonight. So am I understanding correctly there is no date yet set tonight? We, didn't, we did not set a date tonight, no. Okay. Um, it would be great if I could be looped in on that email. So that Absolutely. Could, which I've, I've given, uh, and also those meetings have to be warned anyway. So I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Those meetings do need to be warned. So we will put you on the email. We also, it, it should be on the post. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thanks. And then I can make a copy of that for the meeting for Rochester. Will it be warned? Um, I'm sorry. Should we, it should be warned. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I have to Absolutely. Talk to they closed the early, the council. It isn't. The council is early on the Friday, so I can get out to them and to yeah. see about getting it earlier. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it was a thank you for looking into where where that yeah. problem was. Yeah. Oh boy. Yes. So, okay. Oh. All right. Well, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Well, we need to look into that then. And yes. It sounds well, like uh, Christy needs to follow up with that, and then she needs to know when the town yeah. when, when the okay, town okay. schedules are, because that's her job. Okay, so so we There's have a warning. Hold on, no, guys. Where's the follow-up? Christy's not getting the meetings warned in Stockbridge apparently because the town office closes at noon and she's not getting the information to them in time. Thank you. Okay, so we're having a warning on that. That's great. Um, and the on. Um, the March date for the retreat, there's a budget meeting, right? Perhaps. We're not sure yet. We're waiting to hear back from the auditor as to if we're going to have uh, numbers available then yes. or on the 19th. So if that budget meeting happens, is that open to the public? Absolutely. Okay, great. And, and at this stage, the plan is to have that change. Is that correct? Okay. All right. So will there be a warning on that as well? Okay. Absolutely. Okay, great. All right, the next question is, uh, just as a reminder, Terry and I are working on that transition spreadsheet that Tara alluded to, and we hope to have that done by mid-March. Okay. So we're working on that. Um, so having the breakdown of the numbers of the age group that could be transitioning out of middle school actually will be important to that spreadsheet. Oh, okay. So the number. Yeah. So yeah, can I? Yeah, exactly. So can I be with you two on that? Okay. Great. And the final one, actually, got two more. The um, about the building committee meeting. Um, I am happy to volunteer to do fresh eyes edit on that. I'm a writer, and I would be delighted to help with that. I, I see the two reports here tonight, and I can make some recommendations about how that report could be a little bit more um, functional and usable that could lead into your public discussion, including how certain data is presented. It might be easier. And that that's it's an expertise that I can offer, and I would love to do it. Because, um, and if that rolls into any help you need on the annual report, again, I'm more than happy to help. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And the, the last question I have is, do you have an amount of the Daniel building sale? That's public record, but I'm just curious. I thought it was 70. 70. 72. Between, between, uh, between 72 and 74. That's, the, that's, that's, the the that's just a rough, that's a ballpark. Yeah, I got it. Would Rebecca Klein have a number on that? Is it some of the number? I think Tara. Oh, Tara. Okay, great. Right. Thanks, Tara. That's it. Yeah, actually, Tara would have it because she said it's sitting in the general fund and can be labeled when it's on. That's right. We talked about we talked about that before. She's got a handle on where it is and how much. Right. And are you comfortable with my email directly on that? Or does someone want to get that? Yeah. Oh, you do. It's fine. All right. I'm just yeah. I'm just stopping. Thank you. Okay. All right, that's cool. Thank you very much.
right. Thank you. Did another different fund, did Rochester donate like the doctors did out of the public funds? Did you in the stuff in the other trustee money? No, uh, the, the trustee of the public funds did not donate any money to yeah. any of, of the uh, organizations in Rochester at all. So, in that money, can our $9,000 maybe put directly to Stockbridge for their um, fund rate, for their? Um, Whatever they do, their extra crusade. Usually, this is the way it works is I have to request the money from the set, like it's requested and it's counted in, and then I tell Bill how the money is going to get spent and he sends a check. So it's, it's, not, it's not, not the general fund. fund. Correct. It's, it's not, not just thrown into the general fund. Okay, so this is up here. That's why. Right, it counts as revenue to have a help offset the threshold, but we do use it locally. I think it was after. Was that for 2019 or was that an objection for 2020? What you just said about the trustees. For our current budget, uh, the trustees of public funds did not um, fund any. Um, for the budget we're developing. For the budget we're developing right now, right. Is, well, and it's actually um, you can find it in the town report that they yeah. sent a letter um, in, and it says that they did not fund. Uh, I did see that letter. And it also included the, the school in that letter as well, right? But does that mean that $9,000 of the general fund goes to Rochester then? Like, to, to equal it out, or does it not mm -hmm. work that way? No, it just helps keep our, our subject threshold to... It's the, do we... Oh, it it under the threshold of the incident. Right, and it, 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 it's... it's Right. It, 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 it's the, the, the request is for the, the students of, 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 of the Stockton School District, so okay. we're trying to not uh, lose that money. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Great. Um, the other thing is um, I would like to see where the Stockage kids go to high school versus the Rochester high school. I think you said that, but I just want to make sure um, that that is divided out. I think it's really important to see the difference. And do you see that on the grade level or just in general? I like the grade level because you can see the bubbles and where you know we're going to be in the next year and the year after that. But I definitely want to see how many kids um, that graduated from Stockbridge and going from sixth to seventh grade, where those kids are going? Because mm -hmm. we were kind of concerned about, like you said, that um, if you have one We've student. always done it before. We've always done it. I know, but FERPA has a lot, like it's a lot more um, restrictions. It has to do with the privacy of the I get it, but yeah. well, I just want to not violate anything and get right, I mean, like the last like the, 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 the educational reports. Like, well, we could do by total. Yeah, yeah, I think we should try to break it down as best we can. Right, we might be able to say middle school and then high school. Mm -hmm. and then, then we can get college state and see what they, if it's okay, maybe. Yeah, I know they won't give us like when we get testing reports, they don't oh, they don't break they don't break kids out in certain ways because you can identify them. Right, but this is so. like. But sure, check, I mean, absolutely check with the state and Bruce. We can maybe check with Vina. You know, to figure out if it's if it's if it's legal. It's not a matter of. We've always done it before. That's why. Right, but we were when, we were, when yeah. Always do it. Always. Yeah. Yeah. We haven't. We we. I don't think there ever was a high school in Stockbridge. I think we, we had a one-room schoolhouse, and we always. I know for a fact there was never a high school in Stockbridge. That's what I was. Um. And yeah, that and so the other thing is a statement. I find it really difficult that you guys have a meeting as a retreat. I know it's fun, and you get a lot of work done and all that. But as a community person, I think it's unfair. I just want you to know that. We have to work. I, we have to work too. I don't I just think it's difficult. I work on Thursday, my take exactly. that day off. Right, right. I know, but we, we I, 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 right. we're all I understand that. <laughs> but I do think that it's a difficult thing to have a meeting during the day. I just do. I I think it's I, I don't really understand that it, but that's just a that's just a statement. Well, no, there were people who showed up from the community last time. Yeah. Stand around and listen to us talk. I mean, we don't get 40 me me people here on a good night. We're not going to get 40 people there. I mean, look.
7th. Uh, they will be held in uh, uh, Rochester at 6.30 p.m. Uh, as uh, we noted, we have scheduled a uh, board retreat for 9 a.m. on uh, March 26th uh, and a, a budget meeting to be determined. Uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn.